Hello everyone, welcome back to another stream. We're doing some more stuff, I just need to uh, make sure that I've got all this set up. Hey Sammy! How you doing? I'm literally just about to post the, um, the links. Oh, I should really go to self-promotion here to, um, to post this in the internet. Um, everything posted now in in most places uh, apart from the odd exception you sound like hey, better every day sounds like you're coming up yeah this is just a little bit of stuff left on my chest so it's it's not too bad I'm uh, I'm a lot happier as a result you know characters so we're gonna be doing the same thing we normally do which is append frisk into the um, into the scene along with uh, Toriel, just to have them as reference. So, uh, for anyone that wants to know why Toriel's in Sam's and Papyrus's house, it, it's because height reference. I just need to find Frisk's default model. There we go. Don't tell them that. <laughs> just have Toriel just appearing. Going around Sans' house to ask for, um, well, a cup of sugar or something. I'm trying to think of what she'd actually ask for. You know, because there's that whole thing about uh, Sans and Toriel apparently supposed to be dating or something. Say so it's because she's visiting. <laughs> that reminds me, I need to, um, see if uh, Onion Sand is done real soon. Spurs Nails! Ah, yeah, that makes sense. I love the way that Toriel's, like, scale compared to Frisk is totally out of whack when I first import her. Until we, like, scale her down to reasonable proportions. Like, roughly... Roughly about here. Because Sans is about the same as Frisk as well, if not just a tiny bit smaller. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go reference, reference, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I got up to with MTT as well. Because MTT is still going; it's just at the very end. There are a couple of scenes where I've got that are literally like right at the very end, where I only need to do like very very tiny details or very minimal work. So I'm just trying to make as much bulk work as possible um, in the short term, just to get a lot of progress done. Now, uh, so, let's just call it Skeleton House. This is also going to feature the Dog Shrine underneath, which is going to be interesting. Um, so before we get anywhere, and before people are like, wait a minute, why are you doing the MTT Resort again? Well, I'll show you how this went now, because there are a lot of tiny details. Progress, progress, I see no difference, is Sammy. I just, I know some people might turn around and be like, just focus on one area, but it's because, like, for instance, in here, all I need to do really is punch through the walls now and put the, the windows in so that we can see outside, and then a couple of little things like candles and stuff, and then lights on the roof. Apart from that, it, it's done. You know, like, the book here, placing the characters, putting another book here, placing some lights around, the, the fountain and stuff, the carpet. Um, and then 
That's it, you know, apart from doors. It's it's done, we just need to do the back of the car uh, entrance here. So that's, it, it's pretty much done other than like tiny details. Uh, one of the one, other ones the other night that took a while though. <laughs> Thanks Damon. One of the ones that took the, the longest the other night though was like this notice board because I had to redo it. So this, this is just going to be explaining it here because it's in high res. And it's basically like me trying to put stuff on there that look like it out inside the game. So we've got the spider donut or spider bake sale poster from Fangamer. Of which I don't actually have um, permission to use. But because it's uh, like a poster that fans already know about from Fangamer. I'm just, I'm basically um, not not so much stealing the credit for it it's still in the credits for the uh, the original artists that have done it same with like i did with when I, I put it in the ruins uh we've also got cleaning service which is just a uh, a little notice to the cleaning being done over there then do not lick the fiscus or ficus which is um the plants i'm going to be putting around here i've also got to put a, a crt monitor on the the wall just playing methadone and stuff which is going to be fun Stand Up Comedy Night, which is a reference to both Sans and um, Snowdrake's father. Then we've got um, the Lost Dog one, which is funny because I've d deliberately done that in Papyrus. And that's the um, the same photo of Toby that I used from Temi's place. So it just says, Tiny Dog answers to Toby, has been seen in various places in the underground. If found, please contact Papyrus. Um, because Papyrus is constantly being uh, tortured by the tiny dog or annoyed by it. So then we've got uh, do's and don'ts um, for the facility here, which I wrote in English and Monster. And then this one, which is only a monster, which the best way to describe this one is uh, during the, um, the True Lab section. I'm just going to make sure I'm turning the right way here. During the True Lab section, we see um, the Alphys and Asgore have been calling for uh, souls that have fallen down. And that's just to um, that's just to help out with Alphys' determination experiments. So this poster that's wrote only in Monster here is a lot older than everything else on the, um, the notice board, of course. And it, it just says, uh, do you know someone that's fallen down? If uh, by royal decree uh, of King Asgore, if you know anyone that's fallen down, please um, donate the bodies to Heartland uh, in critical condition. As Professor Alphys is working on uh, uh, a potential cure. Thank you very much, the Royal Guard. So yeah, we got the the monster soul done. What looks like a sepia tone sort of poster. I wanted to make it pretty simple, so we got that going on. And now we got the. Um, the skeleton house that I'm going to be working on. Classic says, Hi Moody, how are you? I've been busy lately this week. Uh, I've been insane. I've been doing a radio show on my other channel. Oh, nice. Nice. God, that's going well, Classic. I'm just going to um, get the reference here. And by reference, I mean, I just need to find the actual map that I saved. I'll check in with... Um, with the character artist in a bit as well to find out how on you and Sam's doing. Um, sounds um, Papyrus House Map. There we go. I did have this saved somewhere else, but I, I think I must have lost it or something, so I'm just going to put it in my documents. Uh, where is it? Interior Skeleton House. And then I can just drag this in. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to be having the secret lab downstairs that we think is uh, sans primarily because I don't feel like I, I need it at the moment but I'm going to be concentrating on the core rooms and today we're going to be blocking it out getting the uh, textures done or at least just set up and then uh, we can go ahead with everything else later on so uh, there's going to be a lot of faffing around in photoshop again and uh, we had to see every single one of the rooms so, it's going to be fun, and then I'll have made progress on most of the interior stuff, uh, and then it's basically just a case of going through and finishing them all off, one by one. 
the, again, the reason why I'm doing this is just because it's nice having more progress on multiple areas than just kind of like focusing on one thing over and over and over again until it's done. Make this slightly bigger here. I figure I need, I need to have Frisk be kind of like, not exactly towering in the doorway, but the doorway needs to be just about the right size. Oh, come on now. Well, the way I'm trying to scale this down and, and blend is like, nope, nope, nope. About there is supposed to be good. And we need a, uh, a window over here. That's going to be interesting because of different windows and everything that we didn't account for in the original. So we got like a window over here. And then we've got a window upstairs and one on the side as well. We don't need to worry about that for the time being. I can always go in uh, VR chat as well and check out some stuff in there. I'm just quickly... Um, quickly checking on some emails in the background. Family first, been taking a break today, says Classic. Indeed, I've uh, been looking after family myself and trying to get some sleep. The, um, the baby woke up from her sleep last night and did not want to go back for ages. So, ended up um, just sort of chilling out with the baby for ages this morning. And uh, as a result, I was absolutely shattered. So, um, was not good. Ended up having to call for uh, family friends to come around, take care of the baby while I basically slept, and now I'm fine, so at some point I probably will put a, uh, a hot drink on as well, because I think my chest needs it. Mm. Right, I think I might do that now real quick, just like, run and uh, quickly do that and also I think I will just start with the art chat again just for reference because the uh, the scale of things looks a bit out of whack here at the moment because I'm already putting down like a default cube and it's already the same size as the living room downstairs basically which is kind of crazy that reminds me I've not shown you guys the uh, the library yet I'll I'll do that too I feel like I'm definitely going to need to uh, <coughs> blow this up <coughs> because how how it is. Oh yeah, some um, some uh, keyboard shortcuts are really nice for this. What I might do is, as well, I can always try placing the door geometry, because that will help get a sense of everything. I figured that one's like a double door, though. That goes through into the kitchen, which is over here. We just shown there. That's one thing I've actually got to keep in mind, is uh, the floor plan is all out, like all over the place. But what I'll do is I'll just start up we are chat at the same time and we can just take a look at something there. What I'm going to quickly do here is I'm just going to yoink, vanish with my Vroid and I'll talk to you guys as I'm getting a drink because I'm not having a uh, chest infection when you like Stuff. So it's pretty cool. Hey Sammy, we, we've got Sammy, Classic, and Damon in the chat. For anyone who wants to know at the moment. I'm trying to find stuff on my desk that doesn't look anything here at the moment. Oh, there it is. I was mentioning this the other day. Um, I, I was mentioning the fact that everything's a bit of a mess in ours at the moment because of the baby. That's pretty crazy. 
Oh, Mew Mew. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be doing the Dark Shrine as well. What I'm going to be doing is part of this stream will be in VR chat. And uh, part of it will obviously be in Blender while I'm making stuff. I just need to find reference for how big the house should be or rather how I think it should be because it's it's looking pretty pretty tiny at the moment. I don't want it blown up like too much, but I don't want it too little either. I figure it should should just be the right amount of room where the skeletons can walk around casually and not feel too restricted and I just realized we need the doorway for Frisk needs to be about oh seem maybe maybe a little bit wider. The only reason I'm saying this one here is because I'm walking around the house and trying to get back to how I feel it's being very spot to me. And yeah the doorway needs to be expanded all the rest of us because we can get too short. That would be crazy. So you're writing different versions of what's underneath the virus is saying. Are you considering having... What I'm going to do is... You sound rough. Either way, I'm going to have a good night. It's a demon. Thank you very much, Damon. Uh, I'm not too rough. I'm not too rough. It's just... It's going to be... It's coming back now. It's hard for you, you're walking too fast. Dude, have I? I've not got that switch. I thought I had a switch. Oh my god. Did I just walk off? Guys, can you hear me now? Oh no, wait a minute. Uh, oh my god. Dude, you can hear me now, can't you? Oh my god, I don't believe I just did that. I don't believe... Oh my god, Sammy, how long have I been walking around and you can just hear me in the background, just only just, just a little bit? I don't believe this. That's so stupid. You wandered away. Okay, so, get this right, I have two microphones set up. One is the, the really crappy streaming microphone that I used ages ago for, like, a load of different streams, and that I use when I'm just being really lazy and... and my battery has ran out of my expensive one. 
And then obviously I've got the expensive one for VR streaming and when I want to just walk off, right? So I've been walking off with the the battery powered expensive one on thinking, oh, that's the one I've got currently switched on. And yeah, it wasn't, it was the other one. So I've, I've just been kind of nattering to myself and you, you guys have just been hearing nothing in the background or me just wandering off and be like, Dave, Dave, where are you going? <laughs> so, uh, oops, my bad. I, uh, I did not check to see whether that had changed. Um, but yeah, at least, at least now I know. So, um, we're coming back for a moment. I just need to buy him. Okay. So, so hopefully, hopefully I will not do that again. All I heard was blah, dog, dog shrine, blah, 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 dish sound. Yeah, so what happened was, in the meantime, I was actually talking all that time, thinking I'd, I'd got the right microphone on. And um, I, I was basically like, yeah, I'm going to be combining the dog shrine in with everything else. It's going to be all good. And uh, I was busy getting myself a drink. And um, yeah, I didn't realize the wrong microphone was on. Oops. My bad. <laughs> totally my bad. That's what happens when you've got multiple microphones. Okay. So what we're doing here as well, we're going to be doing the downstairs. And we're going to be doing the rest of the house. We're going to be combining all of the floors and the dog shrine. Uh, I'm just going to be working on the main area at the moment. What I need to do though, before I do anything, is just get reference um, from other places. So I'm going to be going into the R chat as well for a moment, seeing if anybody's done in there i'm just gonna check and see and we don't have the vr reference on at the moment which is interesting probably because i'm not in vr charts if i if i launch it in non-vr mode What we'll do is we'll launch into it and then we'll uh, we'll see if we can find signs of papyrus's house i know one area where i can find it really easy Um, which will be Doodle Sphere. I think it's Doodle Sphere. Hang on. Alright, so we'll just... Oh. Just making sure I've, uh, I've got everything set up here. I love the way I just, like, totally screwed that bit of the, uh, the stream up. It's like, it's, it's fine. Okay, so let's let's go. Um, where is it? Uh, doodle. Verse. I think it's that one. I know I've got. Um, was it my world's favorites? I swear I've got it in here somewhere. They've got like a load of cool Undertale stuff, and there's the halls of uh, Ebert. I'm just gonna have to search up. Wait, what? Oh, murder drones. Okay, so that's been changed. Um, I zoned out for a moment because of my cat being a turd. It's, it's fine. Let's try uh, under tail. There's there's one that literally has sands in uh, Papyrus's house. I just need to find it. Where the heck is it? I know I can easily go in like Snowden. I'll go there anyway in a moment, but I, I just wish I knew where this other one was that I was going to get into. Because there's another one. Um, there it is, the Doodle Sphere. How come I didn't get in that one before? That's weird. This world is heavy work in progress. Is that the, the same one that I'm thinking of? Just give me a moment. The reason why I say this is because this has, um, or one version of this did have, the skeleton house in that loads up fairly quickly. Hmm. No, this isn't the right one. Hang on. Wait, what? I don't get this then? That should be the right one. Hang on. Uh, let's try. Maybe it was Underverse. 
I, uh, I, I'm half tempted to do, um, you know, like an, a, um, but like for the intro for this, just do like a, a hanging thing for on the verse, you know, like the bits of paper that are up there. That'd be so cool. But yeah, uh, I think it's through the door over here. Yeah, here we go. So this has been updated. There's the house. I need to stop playing as Kaneko from Yellow for a moment. Let's do a uh, story swap. Story swap Kara. Okay, so this is kind of what I'm after in terms of layout. Doesn't seem too bad, actually. Maybe I should get some actual extra reference here. This is good, because this leads to the balcony. It explains why this is like it is. And then obviously we've got Papyrus' room with the fire. I can't wait to actually do the, um, the text just for that. That's going to look awesome. But I need to get the sofa done. I think I'm, I can do that based off the, uh, the other chair that I've got. Then we've got the, the pet rock over here. Have they put the um, the dog shrine under? No, they haven't. If they had the dog shrine under there, I'd be happy. I'm just trying to plan out how this would go. Some of these assets I can use um, from Toriel's house, like the fridge, the uh, counter, and the cooker. Can use those. Can also use that table over there. The doors I can use those. Um, the sofa again. I think I can do that myself. The TV, I can make that. That's fine. The um, pitch frame is no problem. Everything in here, like the computer. I, do I have one? I know Alphys's computer in the lab, so I might be able to use that one or at least make a copy of it. Carpets are easy. The car, I can make that from scratch. The figures, I can have as like little references. So that's not too bad. Bookshelf, I can use Toriel's one. So a lot of this stuff I can, like, throw in from other areas. And then... Sansa's room, I don't think I'll actually do, because you don't really explore it until later on. I'm just wondering whether I should have the staircase like that or not, or try and have it like a proper house one. And that one's the, the mirror. So if I... If I grab a load of these assets... Let's just see about um, anywhere else that might have some that are better. If I go to um, Snowden, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check every version before um, we continue here. Primarily because if I get this wrong, it's going to be really stupid. So I figure I should look at as much reference as possible. People could have skipped through this and be like, dude, what the hell? Especially when I, uh, I messed the, uh, the microphone up. Gooey brownie or corn slice brownie. Ooh. Can we, can we not have all of the, the sections with the same gooey consistency? Because, like, I'm, I'm really picky for brownies. It's like the, they all have to be just kind of, like, slightly gooey and, and chewy, but not too far gone if you get what I mean like they've got to they got to have a little bit of bite and crunch to them but also be gooey in the center I'm, I'm super picky with brownies hey Alvin why did I just pick that up when I don't need to okay so here's Lotus's version I think that is actually a really nice version I like the way that they've changed the uh, the location of the stairs so it's realistic Gooey semi-center. Yeah, yeah. Let's put it this way, right? If you can if you can bite into it, and it's got kind of a nice bite to it, but not. Did you play the Undertale demo for VR chat? I don't think I did, Alvin. I I think I tried loading into it. Hang on. I think Lotus's is probably gonna be the one that I go for here in terms of reference. Because like it's it's just good. 
Like, it's looking real nice at the moment. I can do the uh, the thing with the carpet. Switch back to Canico so I can see stuff here. The only problem I have with Canico's avatar is I've deliberately made her tinier than I am in real life. So let's just... There we go. Has Lotus included the dog shrine? Well, what? No. Okay, so what I need to do there is um, possibly move. Oh my god, I didn't. Has Lotus done. Okay, so I can't. I can't open that, but I can open. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna so copy Lotus's version of this at the moment. Apart from this layout here. This is so good. Makes sense to have a, a window at the back of Papyrus's room there, but no computer? The layout's like slightly changed, but why? Like, <laughs> okay, so let's see what's what's going on over here. Oh, I see. I see why that makes sense. So, will there be the dog shrine? Yes, I'm gonna do the dog shrine underneath. Uh, I'm just literally getting the reference now. And by reference, I mean, I'm looking at what I think will be a good idea. And then I'm like, okay, I'll implement that. This definitely looks, like if anybody sees me in, in VR in the next couple of days and I'm just sat in Snowden 2.0, then you know why. No. Um, what's everybody thinking here? Should we have like wallpaper on the walls or do, do we just do it as like painted stone kind of, although it's not painted stone, is it? It's, it's wood from the outside. So it's going to have to be like wallpaper on the inside, maybe. The only reason I say painted stone is because Toriel's was using that kind of texture, but it's drywall, isn't it? Don't know. Wallpaper is a game theory. Wood framing, yeah. I think that would look nice. See, the thing is, it's like it's wood framing outside, but inside, maybe we could have like plasterboard or something, which is basically like they put it up. It's a thin layer of plaster between the, the wall and whatever surface you want to decorate on. So maybe I could get away with that. I'm just trying to think of how to decorate this because I'm going to have the carpet texture anyway. You know, so that just makes sense. But yeah, we'll be we'll be going ahead and doing this in a moment. I love the way that's separated by the, uh, the metal lip there as well. So yeah, a lot of these assets we can actually borrow from Toriel's house. Let's see about any of the other ones that are currently in, uh, in VR, and then we'll we'll go quickly look at what Alvin said, because I haven't checked that out yet, and then away we go. That one by Lotus there uses some artwork from um, Tumblr. And the only reason I'm calling that out is because I actually... Um, I had a discussion with someone recently who said, yeah, you shouldn't be using that. And I'm like, oh, okay. No. Oh. Snowden Town Legacy, what? Snowden After Dark, I don't think I've seen that. Like, I'm going to go to um, Hall of Souls one eventually. Let's just try out these other ones. See how other people have done this. Did you check out the Hall of Souls one? Um, I, uh, I normally go Hall of Souls first. I'm just kind of like, getting a feel for it. Mitski says, hey Moody, long time no see. Headphones aren't working today, so you're on speaker. I'm cooking mac and cheese right now. <laughs> okay. Because blah, 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 blah. Adults only, wait, what? Should I be in here then? I know that sounds really stupid considering I'm an adult, but because I'm streaming, that makes me feel really weird. Let's, let's just like not be in here just in case. Uh... 
I, I have to pay attention to the fact that my viewer, my viewer base has expanded, so when something is adult only now, I'm like, wait a minute. You gotta make sure nobody's seeing stuff that they're not meant to. We're all adults here, says Ryden. <laughs> you don't know, you don't know who, who'll see this, because my viewer base is, uh, has been expanded a lot. Because, like, before I started doing Undertale stuff, I did uh, a little bit of, like, jokey adult content. You know, so... Disable snow? No. Wait, what? Okay, so this is... This is, like, the snow in the... What was it, Baker's did or something? I don't think I've been here. Why is the great door over there? That's, that's weird. okay. Can we we can go in Grillby's if we want to, but I've already got Grillby's done. Is this? I'm just trying to think now. Is this like a source filmmaker model that's been used? Because I swear it is. Because I've been in here before. Another version. What? Uh. Okay, that's weird. My fi my sister's five and she can hear this also, says Mitski. Exactly why um, I'm being careful. See if there's a smash invite in the mailbox. <laughs> okay, will do. Just a moment. Why is... Um, Giorno Sans here from JoJo? <laughs> it's a JoJo reference. Yes, it is. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. What the? Why is Metal Sonic in here? In fact, should I be even asking? Oh! Oh, wait a minute, I just saw the username there. The username is, is uh, or has been mentioned before to me. I don't know who by, but I remember the username coming up once before and it wasn't brought up in a, uh, a good manner, let's put it that way. Maybe that's why. Okay. Yeah, it's specific, well, it's not exactly Metallics. It's Neo Metal Sonic, or at least it looks like Neo Metal Sonic from, um, Sonic Heroes. It's not exactly the same version, though. Like, Metallics is the uh, the one from Sonic CD, but it's known as Metallics in the uh, UK Sonic the Comic, the Fleetway series. Dude, you're getting me into Sonic stuff now. I'm like a massive Sonic fan. I could, I could just reel off this stuff for ages and let people fall asleep to it. That is Metallics. No, seriously. <laughs> Seriously, if I go look it up now, I'll be able to find it as the Fleetway one. Hang on. I'm going to look it up now on stream because that's, that's annoying me. Let's search it up. Major antagonist in Sonic the comic. Yep, yep, yep. And if I go click... Smash Fighter Z, what? The heck is this? Okay, so it's a different version? Blender. Okay, so that's what a new version that I've not seen or something. Neo Metal Sonic. Let's see. Uh, yeah, but this is Smash Vita Z. Um, uh, da -ba -da -ba -da. I'm going to have to look that up later on, because I know in the Fleetway version it's known as that. Fleetway, Fleetwood Mac, no, no, no. So, in uh, in the UK, we did not have Sonic the Comic, as you guys know. Um, basically, in the UK, the, um, the same people that made Sonic the Comic, as it's known, uh, also made Judge Dredd, <laughs> the, the uh, Judge Dredd comics. So it was made by the same people. 
and uh, as a result, the fandom split in half. So what happens is the US side of things is known as Sonic the Comic, and uh, even though it's known as Sonic the Comic in the UK, the um, the US fans know it as Fleetway. Um, I know, I know, I was messing. Totally went over my head. I'm nerding out here right now. I'm like, no, no, I'm no, I'm right. <laughs> I'm standing my guns and going totally nerdy on this thing for like no reason. Okay, so here's... Oh, dude, I'm loving Frisk's version of this at the moment. The world is called Undertale Demo 3.1. I'll check that out in a moment, Alvin. Oh, I'm liking this. So, I wonder where Frisk got the idea for this. Maybe it was Lotus as well? That didn't look like Neo Metal at all. The back of the head did because of the way that it was drawn and the colouring. The only thing it was really missing was Neo Metal's shoes, shoulders and um, robe. Yeah, I saw the, uh, the TV there. I'm liking... Standing your ground as a nerd, respects and Sammy. No, it's, it's Sonic stuff. It's Sonic stuff. I'm like really into Sonic stuff. Funny enough, there's some like, uh, as like a, a additional law dump to everything. Me and uh, me and Jen met on a uh, Sonic fan site of all places for a laugh. That was funny. Okay, let's go. I do the same with Godzilla, Skyrim, and Attack on Titans as Red. And the thing is, it's like I don't mean to be aggressive when I'm I'm talking about stuff like that. That's kind of sweet, says Sammy. Did you see the Undertale ski game in VR? No. Are you exploring Undertale maps? What I'm doing is I'm making Sands and Papyrus's house and the Dog Shrine and everything else in it. The thing is. I'm trying to get reference for it, or basically ideas, by looking at other people's versions um, and getting a feel for it first, and then I'm making it. So I, I started off by showing some stuff at the beginning. I'll probably be doing that again in a moment. That's The scale of this is interesting because the house is kind of tiny, but has enough room at the same time. You should put a picture of the TARDIS in the cellar. No, no, no. Out of everything that is uh, is British, I absolutely don't like Doctor Who. I just, it's not for me. It's its not a, a thing that I enjoy. <laughs> so you will not hear me talking about Doctor Who very often. The, there's, there's nerdy and then there's like going crazy nerdy and I consider that to be like super nerdy. It would be fun, Aces Raiden. Mm. So that's that's another one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Snowden. The rest are probably just the same. Let's just try that Undertale one that Alvin said. And then we'll go ahead and uh, start building stuff up. Why was I typing in Alvin there? I was like, err. Uh... uh out of Stargate, says John. We don't talk about Doctor Who. <laughs> Let's see, it's that one. John says, out of Stargate. Yeah, I could do. Stargate would be fun. Right, let's see if this works, because last time it just black screened and didn't load. And then I'll... Um, I'll start working on stuff. Oh yeah, I remember the, the Ebert map with the TARDIS. Oh my god, is this literally going to be exactly... The thing is, I'm in PC mode at the moment, so this is going to... Mount Ebert's okay in HD, but I think the... I don't know whether it's continued progress or not. I think somebody said it was cancelled. Dude, if this works fully, you're going to have me playing like... You're gonna have me playing it in VR via um, VRC.
Ebert HD is a work in progress at the moment. I swear some, when I read somewhere like recently, somebody said that it had been canceled because of people stealing from it or something. And that's why it's actually located in a, uh, a uh, locked off map that you have to know the, um, the combination to get at it. This music says Albert. So good. The thing, like, for anyone who wants to know why I'm not doing anything at the moment other than taking reference and stuff, it's mainly just because it's always good having reference before you start doing something. That way you kind of have a feel for stuff, so... Press X or jump. Okay. Have you played the original game? Yes. Instructions. Uh, begin? Name Fallen Human. Oh my god, this is so good. I love the way I'm already saying it's so good and I'm, all I'm doing is clicking stuff in VR. Name your human as Jeff. That would be uh, amusing. Oh my god. Has anyone seen, uh, that reminds me, the new release that re released like three days ago. Somebody did uh, the entire ruins in voxels. So it's like 3D, but it's not 3D. It's basically 3D sprites. That reminds me, in, in the, the one that I'm on about now, the um, 3D sprite release, Flowey is literally already there when he, we go around the corner. So if I strafe, I was going to peek him there, but okay. Like Doom. Yeah, basically it's like Doom. I was considering streaming it, but I don't know whether it's got like a virus on it or whatever, so I didn't want to just open it. And then I was actually looking into trying to set up a virtual machine, but then I was like, I can't be bothered, so. I wonder how this is going to play out in 3D like this. Okay, so I can press X to skip. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, I see. How is this? What? Oh my god, we can, we can use the... Oh, you... Dude, that is... Okay, that is... Little white friendliness pals. I love the way I'm playing this all with the keyboard. I, I, I'm I sorry, Flowey. I'm not going to get hit by those. I, uh, I'm not that stupid. VR chat's the next big thing. Seriously, this is nuts. No, 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 no. I, I'm not going to run into the pallets, Flowey. Not gonna lie, Flowey, I kinda do know what's going on here. I um I've totally not experienced this on two other different separate platforms. You're making him mad. Come on, Toriel. Boom, there we go. Sorry, Azrael. We'll see you at the end of the game. Oh my god, do we actually get to follow Toriel? Maybe I'm asking too much of VR chat here, but do we actually get to follow Toriel? What speed run? No, no, no. You do get to follow Toriel. <gasps> oh my god, this is so good. Hi, Toriel. I know you're probably coded to go certain ways, but uh, actually, that's that's pretty close to what I ended up modeling for Immersion Tale. The shadow of the ruins looms above, filling you with determination. I uh, is if we go this way. I just realized I'm not playing as Kaneko. Yeah, I am. <laughs> it's just Kaneko from Yellow here. It's it's fine. Oh no, I've, I've got to, I, 
I, I can't. I can't. If, if I start playing this, I won't stop on stream. Um, right, let's let's go and actually start getting progress done here. Let's let's just. I, I can't. I can't. Alvin, do we know how far that goes in terms of like, does it go all the way to the end of the ruins or what? Let's let's bring in some of the assets here. We got geometry and we got um, scenery. Like, how far does that go in VR? Because I, I absolutely love exploring things in VR, so... It ends at the running part with Toriel. Oh, okay. Is that me, Mad Mew Mew? Yeah, that's Mad Mew Mew. So Mad Mew Mew, Undyne, Papyrus, and Sands. Uh, they're just here for the sake of it. Mac and cheese is done, says Mitski. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. For those who are just pulling up now, uh, I'll show you what what else we got done before we get started here. Because I need to import things anyway, so I'll be going through different files. So, uh, this is the state of the resort at the moment. The resort just needs doors and windows putting in. Um, it needs some chairs inside of uh, the... and lights inside of Burger Pants Place, maybe some condiment bottles, but we've already got... Uh, all of the pictures for employee of the month and the uh, menu looks really nice. At the moment, this is without lighting as well. Lighting is going to really help here. We've got the kitchen in the back, and I need to put a door on there as well to make it look as though um, it goes all the way through. Uh, then we've got... I need to put, obviously, the fountain in here and the carpets. We've got the light to the core. I need to actually do the, the outside of the core here. That's that's just a placeholder, um, but the idea is I need to have the cause um, section on here so we can uh, walk across and get into it. Uh, then inside here, that's where fish receptionist is going to be. I just need to put the uh, the book there. We've got the stage set up, and I need to put the TV in the corner and all the plants. We need to do the windows in here and the lighting, and then we've got the uh, the nice... Metaton themed uh, tables. I need to put like some cutlery and some plates on all of those. And then I need to put a TV in the corner there and obviously light it up. Hey, Doge! <laughs> Joining slowly to panning to a giant tutorial was terrifying. <laughs> How you doing? Threw one of the piece of pasta at your model on my PC, says Mitsuki. <laughs> so, yeah, and then over here, let's explain this. So, um, I was trying to do this notice board, and people have given me a little bit of um, ideas for each one. I had to take at least one down because of it being used from Tumblr, I believe, and I was advised not to do that, even though it's literally just a, a reference that I'm crediting in the, the credits. So instead, we've got the, the fan gamer poster about the spider bake sale. Then we've got um, cleaning service sort of note, that's from the, the janitor that's made out of slime. That's just a generic cleaning service thing. And we've got stand-up comedy night, that's a reference to Snowdrake and Sands because of the colour and also the background. We've got please do not lick the ficus, I think that's the way you pronounce it, that's just one that I made up myself as well, because of ficus licker. Then we've got lost dog, <laughs> tiny dog, answers to Toby, this has been seen in various places in the underground. If found, please contact Papyrus. So, um, no Easter eggs. I mean, you could consider these Easter eggs. There we go. Just a notice that guests should avoid being nasty to, uh, to other guests. And then the last one here, which is an interesting one. So, essentially what I'm trying to do is keep with the theming that uh, going, going through here, what we have is monster text that will slowly be translated by Kara uh, throughout the movie. And the idea is that uh, as we go through, you'll see more English text appearing, mainly just because in certain locations that makes sense. So, for instance, uh, Temi Village is the first time you'll see English. It just makes sense because it's Temi. Um, but as we slowly get through more towards um, MTT Resort here because of uh, Metaton liking being a TV star based off uh, human 
sort of uh, television programs. That's when we start getting more English being prevalent around the place. It just makes more sense. But this one in particular, this one is uh, a poster linked to the True Lab. This one I've wrote all in monster text to indicate that it's supposed to be a little bit older. That's also why it's got more of a sepia tone sort of look to it, or an old paper look to it. And this one is all in monster text, not translated, but I can read for you because I wrote it myself, obviously. Um, this reads as follows. Uh, do you know anyone that's fallen down? By royal decree of King Asgore, uh, anyone that has been fallen down or is in a critical condition, please bring them to the lab so that Professor Alphys can help as she's working on a cure for the condition. And then it just says, uh, uh, thank you, royal guard at the bottom. So, yeah, that's a thing. So I, I figured that way it kind of ties everything in, law-wise. You can read Monster. <laughs> Never knew Monsters had their own writing. It's um, one of those things where fans have debated it for a, a while, where, um, where fans have debated, like, well, how can Frisk look, know Monster language, you know, when they fall down? Um... So the idea was that because Kara has been in the underground long enough, Kara is the one that's translating everything. It also kind of links into the narrator Kara theory. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. My drink almost went down the wrong way there. <coughs> the wrong way there. But yeah, um, that's, that's what we got to the resort so far. And then the library here. It would make sense if they were just New English. Potentially. But yeah, we got the, um, the library here. The library is something that's more further along because it's got actual lighting to it. Tutorials outside. I've tried giving the, the windows reflections as well. The idea is that outside, I still need to build up a little bit, but um, it's going to have, like, obviously the outside of Snowden here. Toriel's looking menacing, <laughs> but she's only there for reference just so I can get the right scale. But yeah, this is looking a, a little bit nicer as well. I've got all the, the books on shelves and stuff. I only need to really do uh, a couple of small details. I need to put the, uh, the tablecloth over the top here, I think it is, and I need to add the step ladders that go up to the top shelf, and then just maybe a couple of posters because we've already got this one that I got off like Google. I just googled library rules and then just threw that out. So, that makes sense. Um, that's going to be fun. This one looks really nice. Uh, I spent a little while just messing around with it. But, anyway, let's let's get on with this here. I just realized I've not put the, um, the music back on either. Where is it? There we go. So they can spell library. The, the funny thing is, I'm not going to mention which character it is, but out of all of the Undertale characters, I could not get the, uh, the library lizard model. So I had to use another one. And uh, the character that's in there uh, at the moment has a, uh, a joke line about them not actually being the librarian, the librarian being on holiday. And that they don't actually know why it's uh, spelled incorrectly. So, yeah. Let's see. Trailer now. No. No. We've already seen the trailer. Loads. Hey, memes. <laughs> the, the amount of times we've seen the, the old nine-month-old trailer. The nine-month-old trailer. There we go, we got, we get all this stuff in there, we got a wooden door and door frame here, that should be appendable. There we go. But I didn't see the trailers as Miski. Any news on the Undertale 3D fan film, says Smasher. Hello, so yeah, I'm working. The trailer was in the last stream. No, it was the, um, it was the, or the one that I played, which was, uh, um, how we got to this point. Which is just basically uh, showing off all the progress. The The trailer wasn't actually shown. Okay, so that's going to be like there then. I need to make that slightly bigger. Unless, hang on. How big's that door? That door's slightly... Hang on. 
Does it scale tutorial? Kind of is. If I think that's slightly smaller. What is Immersion Tail? So Immersion Tail is basically a 3D um, full movie of Undertale's true pacifist route made by fans for fans. And by that I mean I'm the one making it and everybody else is helping me make it. Which is really fun. But yeah, I'm just working on the last little bits before we go ahead and animate everything, so fun times. I also need to figure out um, uh, not just like the stuff that I've done at the moment, but I need to do particle effects and things. So that'll be uh, some fun stuff to do. And this, this room is gonna look really small, so I'm gonna make this a double door. This is going to be slightly off compared to the um, the in-game one, but it's going to look bigger and a little bit roomier and make sense, so... Maybe about there for that? Because that's, that's really tiny. I'm going to have to include the chair and stuff. So let me go and get the chair from Toriel's. The trailer you made is for Immersion Tale. Yes! Sans Moody, I remember Immersion Tale. So instead of showing the trailer off, what I'll do is I'll show you guys the um, the how we got here so you kind of get an idea of, of what's been going on. Let's see, where is it? It's recent as well, so I don't have to go all the way back to find the nine-month-old trailer. There we go. Okay. I'll show this off so that you can get an idea of what's going on. Let's just put that there, and then grab grab it from uh, main screen. Here we go. I just realised I'm gonna have to minimise this anyway for a moment to turn off the uh, the music. Hang on. What idea do you have in mind for some posters? Um, well, I'm going to change the posters in the undernet eventually, but like at the moment, what I'm going to do is include all of the characters on the posters and stuff eventually. That's going to be good. Oh, can I just... Here we go. So this... This is the new video that I like showing people because it's, it's more magical. Like, the idea was when I did the trailer nine months ago, I did it with what I had at the moment. And uh, and then I just upped my game a lot. And since then, all the community's been, like, very helpful. Like, incredibly helpful. I can't, I can't understate that. It's like, without, without the community behind this, a lot of the stuff would not uh, be possible. So, yeah, this one's... This one's more impactful for me, and I really like this one, so let's, let's show it off for a moment. Recently, I've been trying to branch out into other areas to show off content, and obviously with me doing my Undertale animation, and messing around a lot in VR chat and working with some people from VR chat on the animation, I decided that I would try and secure a place in the Undernet hub I mentioned that I was going to have like a crossover or something with them to try and get my content in here or at least seen by people and yeah it happened so at the moment with the new update to the Undernet hub what we do have is the immersion tale posters in here um but yeah I didn't expect this level of support and then it got a bit crazy three two one ow I'm Alive? <laughs> I'm alive! You would be dead where you stand. <laughs> oh, oh hey, my god. Oh, it's gonna be so good! But yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. This is gonna be great. So it was around this time that I managed to get lucky and got the Mad Mew Mew model here from Uni Delta from the Undernet Hub. This is another one of those models that has specifically been uh, erased from the internet so it's really hard to find so I'm really happy to get another character to animate here to kind of fill out the cast a little bit more. Ow! 
Whoa. I'm alive? <laughs> I'm alive! Yo, you're a kid too, right? I can tell because you're wearing a striped shirt. Everyone is always laughing and cracking jokes, trying to forget our modern crises. Dreariness, crowding, lack of sunlight. I would join them, but I'm just not very funny. At least, I'm not making puns. See this, see this, see me, see me. See for, see for, so for, so me, de de. <laughs> Did you hear what they just said? They said a human wearing a striped shirt will come through. I heard that they hate spiders. You idiot! In this world, it's kill or be killed! <laughs> You're about to face the greatest challenge of your entire journey. Your actions here will determine the fate of the entire world. If you refuse to fight, Asgore will take your soul and destroy humanity. But if you kill Asgore and go home, monsters will remain trapped underground. What will you do? Well, if I were you, I would have thrown in the towel by now. But you didn't get this far by giving up, did you? I say, just make it as simple as possible. Stop overthinking it. Tell me right now. Tell me right now. Tell me right now. Why are you I can fucking do this. It's all good. How do you work this hard? How do you have the motivation? I'm jealous. <laughs> this entire <laughs> this entire role day was doing like seven days. <laughs> Determination is the key. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> So this yeah. crap, I mean myself. It was so Disney. I can't clap. Oh no. Bright new future. Man. Wow. I like that. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my god. Oh my no goodness. Way. Holy, ain't no, ain't no mother. Oh my god. Holy, I can just Oh, mama says no by her. Naps of this. Oh, look. Oh, Naps of this. Oh my god. <laughs> Fucking cool as hell. All of, the, all of this runs in real time as well. <laughs> Holy shit, this is fucking amazing! That is insane. insane. Moody, oh! you did such an amazing job. I love it's it. Not over. Shut up and take my money. I pay to watch this. So yeah, I, I I really like that one. I I like that one because uh, as much as this is my project and I'm only getting help, you know, like doing the voiceovers and stuff, 
I, uh, I like that video because it has more of a community feel to it. And I, uh, I definitely think that a lot of this could not be possible without the community. You know? So yeah, it's, uh, it's very nice to see that. Oh, I need to get the other assets here from uh, Toriel soon. Bookshelf. I need to get the, uh, the bookshelf assets. And by that, I mean in the bookshelf file is basically all of Toriel's house. So I need to like take out stuff like the table, the chairs, um, all the little details and just bring them along so I can easily just put them in uh, Sans and Papyrus's house. I don't know whether you guys are actually seeing that on screen. No, you're seeing the other stuff. Okay, let's let's change it so you guys can see. If I just if I just shut that down for a moment, just come, bam, and then there we go. It switches over. So yeah, I just need to grab this stuff. But yeah, the um. That video I'm using a lot more now just because of how much I like it. We'll keep all of this stuff and we'll keep the table, I think, as well. And even... I, I was going to say the bed, but Papyrus doesn't use that. He uses a race car, so maybe... Maybe instead of, like, the actual bed, if I just keep the pillows, that's not too bad. We can keep some of the paintings and I can just replace them. Not so much the, the crochet, though. That's more Toriel's thing. Um, I can keep that stuff. We can keep... Do they have a mirror in those? Actually, just let me check the... I don't think they have a mirror. Okay. So I don't need the mirror, then. Uh, let's Let's get rid of that. Tutorial dabbing. <laughs> I can I can probably use let's see. Okay, Papyrus doesn't have Oh, because he has a closet, yeah. Um Okay, so that makes sense then. Let's let's get rid of the dresser and the closet. Uh do they have anything like this? I think they do. I'm, I'm literally just comparing. What I'm doing here is I'm pulling up a image of the skeleton's house and just picking out bits that I know they have and bits that they they don't and just deleting the ones that I don't need. Like for instance, those I don't need and I don't need the plant. The, I don't need that. Don't forget the checkered pattern on his bed. Oh, trust me, I'm going to be Make sure I get all the details correct, as usual. Because I know if I don't, then people are going to be like, Dave, you got it wrong! And I'm going to be like, no! I just wanted to make a cool film. Dave, but you got it wrong! You got it wrong! Next minute, I'm just like, not able to forget. And before somebody quotes, don't forget. <laughs> he forgot it! He forgot everything. Cancel him on Twitter. <laughs> okay, I can possibly use that. Uh, do we have bookshelves in it? Yeah, we do. And we have one in Papyrus's room. Um, what I need to do is figure out the sofa here, which is normally two to three chairs. Big. Wait a minute. Why is... Oh, are you kidding me? I have a room in Animal Crossing that is Papyrus inspired to Sammy. Funny enough, there's a Twitter account on... <laughs> that sounds so stupid. There's a Twitter account. I was going to say on Twitter then. Um, I'm just going to double check to see whether I've got Cherry all here as well. Um, there's a Twitter account that has uh, Animal Crossing, but it's, it's Undertale. So, while well, I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say here in English, basically... Somebody's made all of the Undertale areas, or a massive amount of them, in Animal Crossing. And it's just so cool, because I actually got inspired to make uh, some of the assets for Toriel's house from that. So I keep an eye on that account, just to make sure... Like, that I, I keep an eye on it, to, to make sure that they've not done anything else that's cool that I, 
I think I could possibly try and copy. My mind at the moment is just like overflowing with ideas here. I'm just like, I need to figure out where all these assets are and stuff. And where's the chair? Okay, there's flowers. Where's, where's Cheriel? I, I, no joke, I can't find Cheriel here at all. That's weird, because I know I I have the mo- There it is. It's a separate model. Okay. Slams hand on table. I'll take the entire stock. <laughs> oh god, that reminds- R.I.P. Bluebirds is Alvin. That reminds me, I, I need to check. If I go to open here, or even... Okay. I think I'm good. I I shall say nothing else. <laughs> da -da -da. Nervous laughter. It's okay. It's totally fine. <clears throat> uh, where's Toriel? Yeah, I know she's like right in the center of the screen, but I need to. I need to figure out. Oh, there she is. Bam! And now she's gone. She got dusted. Um. Now I can take most of this and use it in Sans and Papyrus' house. Hey Boydley, how are you doing? It's been a while. Let's do let's do a generic house assets. <laughs> that way I can just avoid saving over Toriel's house assets just in case I need them in future. Okay, so let's before I do anything here, let's just Start blocking out things here. My, um, back in the day when Twitter had a bluebird and now it has an X for a budget cast. Not really much to do since void, like... I was in the undernet before, just chilling out. I've been doing that a couple of times, like usual, just to make sure everybody knows I'm still alive. <laughs> I, need, I need to do that more, because it's, it's fun hanging around with people, but at the same time, I'm losing time. I did mention this, um ages ago with the project where I said I wanted to get as much done as possible before February the I think it was February the 21st because that was when we were going to switch over to looking after the the baby and uh, as a result now I only have like if, if I don't stream during the evenings I have maybe from about 8 30 till if I'm pushing it maybe like 2 a.m to do stuff but if I stream or if I play a game with somebody, that normally takes away an hour. Uh, which means I only start doing stuff at like 10, so I only have maybe like two hours time left. Because, I say two hours, it depends, it all depends. Basically I've not got as much time as I did before, so I've got to kind of manage everything well. The baby's fine though. <laughs> That's the most important part, the baby's fine, I'm happy. It's just a case of making sure I have enough time to uh, obviously finish this project. I feel like I'll be chipping away at it slowly for quite a while, but it's no big deal. At least it will get done and I'll be happy. Okay, there we go. I need to append the collection Toriel chair. The reason why we bring Toriel's chair in here is so I can actually get the scale of it and then we can go ahead and uh, turn it into the sofa how big did I make that compared to Toriel in the ruins or Frisk even hang on I'm just gonna load up the ruins or rather ruins part four which is Toriel's one ruins part four where is it load it up and see how big it is compared to Toriel. Uh, let's see. Is it up? Oh, there's Frisk. Oh. Do, 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 do. Okay, so Frisk is... Roughly up to the me the medium part of the bookshelf. The chair is about the same height as Frisk, maybe? Oh, I see. The chair is slightly 
slightly taller than Frisk. So if we if we scale that down to about about there, that's roughly how high the uh, or tall the uh, the chair is, and then I can do the sofa based off that. That's a big ass chair. Shouldn't the the top of the seat cushion be at her knees? Wait, what? Th that'd be tiny then if you if you say that. I can. Cause look, where her knees are there is where the seat cushion is. That's the um, that's the thing is trying to scale everything up to monsters that makes everything look really massive to Frisk, which is quite hilarious actually. So I figured now if I just take that and use that as reference, then I can easily just like make that into a sofa. Because I did here, I just, how did I do that again? I think if I remember rightly, I just used uh, surface modifier, not surface, sorry, sub -deform. So let's, let's go ahead. I reckon well, this is going to be me being crazy again. Or rather, I think I'm going to be crazy, but it's probably decent sounding. I reckon the sofa is going to be about that in size. One side for Sans and one side for Papyrus. So if I just make the sofa that big. Then I, I don't think that's going to be too bad, right? Mm. It's having a drink at the same time. So if I go ahead here and do... I'm trying to figure out how I did this originally because it's months ago since I made this asset. So I reckon we do like the very very minimal block out here, it's just like... Bam. That reminds me, um, depending on what happens in future, I might have to start animating properly, as in like, small teaser segments. Uh, I mentioned this the other day, the reason why for it, but I, just to make sure I don't goof up anywhere, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say that there may or may not be something happening this year, maybe towards the end of the year, in which I may need a trailer for it. Um, that way, nothing can be uh, breaking <laughs> any NDAs or anything, because I'm being obscure. Um, so, yeah. Basically, things be happening, and, and you may get a new updated trailer soon with, uh, or rather, eventually with uh, vocals in, and obviously the the characters in all of the areas. So, fun times. Wait, so to, to about, about there, like that, roughly? Fun times indeed, says Alvin. I, I can't wait to do that either, because, like, it, it's just going to be really fun for me to get it all done and hopefully be really good and throw it all together, almost like, because... I suppose you could say outside of like the trailer that I did like nine months ago and the individual smaller trailers for the areas, having characters in areas being fully voiced and having some sort of thing done, you know, to make them look good is, uh, is going to be really fun. And obviously it's going to be like a proper trailer is the best way of putting it, you know. Like we've already had one trailer like nine months ago, but that's really old right now. 
So the, the whole deal with it at the moment is just doing a new one that is going to look a lot better and be more accurate to the final presentation now that we've come so far with everything. Oh, while you guys are here, how many people are in chat? Please just say yes in chat or I'm here just so I know because I've got something really important to ask all of you and I figure I could get as many people to sort of give me an idea on this as possible. So we got, we got Sammy, we got Voidly. That's two people at the moment. Let's just double check while I'm... I'm waiting for other responses, just see how many people are actually in here. Okay, so it says seven. It says seven people are in here. Who, who's currently got me on in the background? I need your input. It's important. It's really important. It's ideas. There's Alvin. So you got three people. Three out of seven ain't too bad. That moment where I'm like, I'm going all map pat up in here and everyone's like, oh no, not again. So, I'll, I'll ask I'll ask everyone that's here at the moment or re is responding really quickly. So, I got a little bit of an issue. It's not a massive one. It's just curiosity, right? And uh, I, I figure asking you guys is obviously better than just trying to uh, do everything or get, do all the guesswork myself, primarily because everybody has their own idea of what things should look like or how things should be, right? So I'm not gonna stall or beat around the bush or it'll be crazy anymore. I'm just gonna get straight into the details. There is only, after I've done the interior sections here and the, the core for this update, there's only one more area that I need to do that's super important. Can anybody in chat guess what it is? After I've done all of the interior sections and the core, can anybody guess what the last section that I need to do is? Oop. There's a reason why I say it like this as well. The MTT boss fight. No, no, no. That's going to be in the core. I still need to actually do that. So, what I'm on about here, and the one thing that is getting me confused at the moment that I need everybody's help on, is the last area that I need to do after everything else is the barrier the actual barrier area and by that what i mean is the area where we fight asgore at the end of a true uh, end of a true pacifist run uh, an end of a neutral run i also need to do because uh, i've been reading something interesting recently and this is why i'm asking everybody i need to do the barrier right but somebody mentioned that even though the barrier when you fight asgore looks like an infinite hallway Apparently, the place, somebody said, like, the place where we fight Flowey in his Omega form, or his Photoshop form, whatever you want to call it, the one where he has all the souls, and the area where we fight Asriel as well, that void that's full of, like, crazy rainbows, apparently that is all the same area, so that's all the barrier, right? And I've asked this before of people, but I, I don't think I was immediately convinced on the answer where I was like, huh, right? If all of those areas are supposed to be the barrier, then explain it to me. Uh, I, the, I, the reason what I mean is like, I don't know, I, English Dave, come on. I'm trying to wrap my head around how it all works. And that way I can get a clearer understanding of how I should model it in 3D. So like, for instance, I was trying to think about it before and I was like, okay, so to Asgore, maybe, or rather to monsters, it appears differently based on various different things. So like, for instance, for humans, the barrier might literally just be um, a, uh, a small room that has a, uh, a like almost like a, a magical force shield in it. 
and you can just walk in and out of it. And that's how you get to the end of the game, right? But to Asgore, because Asgore is after something that he can't really attain without taking a soul, it makes it look like an infinite corridor that he's never going to reach the end of. Right? And then with Flowey, with Flowey, the whole deal with Flowey is that basically, um, because Flowey has absorbed all of the, the uh, other souls, what it is, is there's just nothing left anymore, for at least for Photoshop Flowey. So it it's just a black void, devoid of anything, because there's just nothing there anymore. Um, and then when it comes to uh, Asriel at the end, because everybody else technically is there, but it's you're relying on everybody's hopes and dreams at the end, maybe that's why it's all rainbow colors. I honestly don't know, so... I figured I would ask you guys so we could try and figure something out because I'd be going crazy otherwise. And you know what my brain's like by now. It's just like, need need some sort of logic. Help. <laughs> you know, so I, I figured I would uh, I would plead with everyone in hopes that I can uh, work it out. And there we go. That's, that's that done. I, I'm like, oh wait. Okay. Maybe it looks like a liminal space. Remember, it's magic, so it can adjust itself in size as long as the monsters are still inside the mountain. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, oh yeah, like, you're in the middle of the barrier during Asriel's fight. Yeah, a lot of people suggested that, or at least some fans suggested it was another place that Asriel takes you when you're fighting him in uh, True Pacifist. But of course, you're still there with Asgore. You know, Asgore's makes it look like you just have to run through an infinite corridor and then you're at the end. So it makes it look like it stretches infinitely. With Flowey's one, that's when he's absorbed everything. That's when he's won more or less and you're the only thing standing against him. Um, so, at that point, where he's got all the souls and everything, it's almost like he's sucked all the the you know everybody else out of the underground in terms of like e the souls and stuff so there's just nothing there it's just emptiness and everything's devoid of a soul and then um and then the end is is crazy it's almost like you're part way through the barrier and then obviously Azrael breaks it at the end and it just looks like a white piece of paper that's been torn in half um I just, it's weird trying to get my head around it is like really weird in terms of like how I would do it in 3D because the original idea I had was some sort of like at least for for um, True Pacifist Azriel's ending was like some sort of like weird void where you, you're on like a bunch of platforms that are made out of other sections of the underground there's some kind of like familiar area but I don't think that would work now so it's kind of weird and I figured I should try now to, to get as many sort of ideas or at least try and understand it properly so that when I get to it, it's it's easier to wrap my head around it and just be like, oh, okay, this is how I should be doing it, you know, instead of kind of fumbling at the very end and be like, guys, guys, i got a problem. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, I can, f I can do the one with Asgore, the, the infinite corridor. That one's pretty crazy. It's just like, is it, at, like, do we show it looking as though it's actually there as a physical space, or do I just do, um, do I just do it a little bit and make it look like it's an illusion? No. And then, if that's the case, then, obviously, Flowey's one's going to be the easiest. You just have it as, like, a dark void. You know, that, Flowey's one's going to be the easiest one. Can, by far, because it, it is literally just a dark void with nothing else in it. Nothing survives, it's just flowery. You know. Um, Asriel's one, though. Asriel's one's going to be like some weird, trippy thing. This is the best way of putting it. You also got to know how humans made the barrier, says Voidly. Maybe since... There was a, the absorption of human souls. Maybe Omega Flowey or Azriel did adjust the size of the barrier with limited human magic, potentially. I think what doesn't help is somebody turned around the other day and was like, yeah, basically, 
Um, basically, it's just like a small cave area that's just, just messy because of human magic and stuff, so it makes it appear different. What about the core? It's fairly complex, says Doge Meme. Uh, the, the core is like almost done in terms of the interior and stuff. Like I did the demo of it, I just need to finish that up, but it's it's more the barrier that's giving me problems just visually on how I, I represent it. Like, it is crazy thinking about it. Can't you see the twilight peeking through the barrier right before the Asgore fight? Yeah, actually that is a thing. Um, in the text, it does say you can see the twilight peeking through the barrier. Just give me a sec, because I can't actually remember twilight as a, a thing, so... Um, definition of twilight. Soft glowing light. I mean, that's... That's kind of um, what we see in game anyway, because what we see in game is the um, the bright white door at the very end of the corridor. So that that's basically that. You know, it's almost like saying you can see the exit at the end of this infinite corridor, you just can't get to it. Um, oh, I'm just reaching back here and getting something. But yeah, it's <sighs> trying to come up with this idea of of it is the the last hurdle and then uh and then once that's done we literally do have um everything done you showed references on discord yeah the the reference i had for the barrier previously was one piece of artwork i think from deviant art but it was literally just like the exact same thing from asgore's fight you know, maybe I should make Hasgore's fight instead of a square corridor. Make it more like um, I've done with, you know, Waterfall where I had like the cave style setup. Where I made it look more like a cave wall. Maybe having it look like a, a giant sort of cave area would be better. Twilight is shining through the barrier of... So maybe, I'm, I'm leaning more into that at the moment. We have it be like a giant cave area. And then for like Asgore, we have the, the sides of the cave being lit up a lot by the light from the barrier and the outside. Which makes sense as to why it's illuminating everywhere else around New Home a little bit. And then, obviously for Flowey's one, because Flowey changes things, we don't need to worry too much about the visuals for that one. And it's just Asriel then. It's like, because Asriel's floating around and stuff. So maybe, maybe I do like, um, I'm going to have to go in VR chat again just to show you here. I got an idea for it based on what I did originally for, um, for the final fight that I think would work. If I mix... If I mix um, the idea of having the light or the effects for it bounce off the side of the walls, and then that would kind of work. Um, I'm just going to load this up now, show you guys and see what you think. Maybe have the corridor with glittering rainbows around it, but keep the, the shape of the barrier for the Asgore fight and have it pulse with rainbows that represent like magic. Yeah, that would be cool. That's kind of what I was thinking of. I'll, I'll show you now because I like I like visual representation. You know, it just it helps. It helps a lot. What we'll do is to make sure I don't get copyright strike too much. I'll just turn the world volume off. Okay, so if I go to, um, I, I love just looking at the recommended here because sometimes you get some interesting ones like Desert Planet or A Happy Place. And then other times you get some really sus looking ones like, would you like a succubus avatar? It's like, no, no thank you. I just, I, I want to go to Undertale. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, it's like, please, please no. Is it that one? I'm trying to remember. I think it was just Fallen Down, Fallen Down. 
Here's that one. Yeah, by Kara. The reason why I'm going here is because I figure it'd be kind of cool and sort of loop in, but it kind of gets the impression that I want. I could always go to Ebbet as well if I wanted, because that's kind of large and would do it. Actually, I wonder if Ebbet has its, its ending even done. So, obviously, we start the game here, right? But what would be cool, I think, idea-wise, is if we had a, a cave that was like this, but a lot longer. Not with a hole in the roof, but instead we've got, like, that representing the the what the barrier could look like with the light shining in through it, right? And imagine it's just, like, this massive room that's, that's like, a, a giant cave like this with some ruins in it. And we can have, like the delta rune on the floor or whatever to show uh, some sort of like ruined part to everything just to kind of bring it in line with everything else so there's something there to look at and then we can have the light bouncing off the walls and have the walls covered in you know like crystals similar to um uh waterfall and the reason why i say that is because crystals are like prisms so they reflect light so we can have the light bouncing off the crystals and then it makes sense as to why everything's going trippy. Either that or we just say it's Azrael's magic. <laughs> you know, we, we can just do that. Say it's Azrael's magic. Because we, we could even turn around at one point and just be like, um, have some uh, descriptive text just to mention we're actually inside the barrier at that point. So instead of, imagine like this area where Asgore is. So Asgore's like round here, we fight Asgore in this area. Imagine like we have some text or something that says we're a little bit further in, so it makes sense as to why the, the effect is more intense, magic-wise. So we could have it like about here. You know, that makes a little bit more sense as to, you know, we're like halfway through the barrier. So it obviously trying to sort of get through the barrier at the same time as fighting Asriel is... Uh, is going to cause some trippy effects. But yeah, I figure that might work as an idea. I mean, even falling down here kind of works. What about making some objects in the area float? I could do that. Like, I, I went full Kingdom Hearts with it on the, the actual save file. Where is it? Kingdom Hearts. For those who don't know about Kingdom Hearts, you're going to find out. I'll tell you exactly how I did it originally when I was describing things or thinking about things, was I did it based on, where is it? Is that it? No, that's a, that was it. Okay, so when I originally did this, I made uh, the barrier look pretty much like the beginning of Kingdom Hearts, which is crazy, but it's because all I could figure out was just like, I wanted some Delta Rune sort of symbolism in there and uh, some ruined stuff kind of like what I was on about just so what I did was I literally had like a giant delta rune on the floor that looked kind of like this and then I just had like the for the moment or the time being that we had like some crazy trippy lighting effects but then I had like a little bit of the ruins again to kind of tie it into the beginning of the game and then I just had Azrael so it was more of like a small arena where you would float around and fight him. But obviously that doesn't work within the context of the game or anything. So it's it's really weird to try and work out. Let's try. I'm wondering if there's because there was another thing that I wanted to look at as well from Kingdom Hearts that I think may or may not be in VR that would work effect wise. Is it that one or because it has some trippy effects for its um you know its skyboxes. Is it? Don't make me have to go on this website just to find this thing. It's either that or I go and find it on YouTube. Uh, do, do, do. Where is it? There was one where it was literally like the final boss fight for I think it was Kingdom Hearts 2 that had some really trippy uh skybox that literally looked exactly like what i wanted more or less if i could do that then that'd be great uh let's see maybe 
I can't remember what this one is, so if it's not the right one, I'll just go to this website and show you. But it's it's something I'm going to have to ask a lot of fans about while I uh, do all these other assets. Because then I can and finally wrap my head around it. If this isn't it, then yeah, I'm going to have to go on that website and show you. Yeah, this isn't it, which is unfortunate, because it had like trippy effects kind of like that in it, but I wonder if they actually have, they have the arenas in here. Can I go in the arenas and try and see if they've got trippy effects? Oh, it's not letting me go in, I don't think. And before somebody comes in here later on and goes, dude, why are you in Kingdom Hearts World? It's like, I was trying to explain something visually. Where's... Oh, there we go. Wait, it's loading something? What is it? Oh, is it loading an avatar? And I've... Yeah, it's loaded an avatar. God damn it. Didn't want an avatar. Right, uh, let's... Let's jump out of here again so I can... I can show you. Yeah, somebody's gonna come in now and be like, Dude, why are you... Why are you doing that? No clip. There we go. So I'll show you this now. This website that I was on about. It's a really good website that allows me to show you things from other games. Uh, let's do... There we go. While I'm on about this in the background. I'll put the music back on as well. So... Ba -ba -da -ba -doo. Where is it? No clip. Where you at? Where you at? I'm trying to find this website is annoying. There it is. Okay. So if I just buy him... Yeah, there we go. So this, this website allows me to look at different assets from different games to give you an idea of stuff. And what I was after was Kingdom Hearts 2, Final Mix, and I think it was... Where was it? No, no, no. It was, it was something crazy, like one of the last, uh, the last areas, specifically. Town, Space Paranoids, no, Thomas River. It's good that you can actually do this, though. It's pretty crazy. Gummy Missions. So I think it might have been Salt the Dreadnought, maybe? Let's load that up. It wasn't that, but it's something similar. It might even be the final boss. Is it in here? No. Okay, right, it's not that. Let's try. It might have just been the final boss. Um, there we go. So this was kind of... Is it 3D? Yes, it is. You can look at all of this in 3D in your browser, which is crazy. But this is, this is kind of the only other thing I was thinking of was be to try and see if I can emulate this sort of effect. It kind of reminds me of um, Asriel's bit a little bit. Let's let's try and see if we can find anything else through here that looks... No. Because I like looking through games like this to see if they're similar. You know. That's kind of... That's kind of like it. This is what I did for um, ruin, uh, the Ruins, uh, Waterfall as well. Here we go, so we got this crazy effect going on as well. That actually might work. You know, that kind of like swirling effect for... Um, I really like that, just add a little bit of colour and that would be perfect. The, the, the spiralling kind of like effect that's going up here to a certain point would really work for, I think, um, Azrael's final fight. You know, just have the um, the entire sort of area filled up with something like that. I like the way that that just kind of like spirals up from the bottom and just goes all the way up. And just have Azrael floating around in it. What about that one? I'm just looking through each area here just to make sure that's, that's not what I was after. I think it is, because I don't know all the names for all the areas from Kingdom Hearts. It's a bit annoying trying to find which one's which.
that one's kind of similar as well, having some sort of like effect that's scrolling at the top. Proof of existence. That kind of reminds me of the uh, final card. Huh? Let's see. I'm, I'm actually, I just realized that, uh, hang on. If I go to Kingdom Hearts 1, the final boss area from that has uh, a similar effect, I think. I got camera speed. No, I didn't want camera speed. I want to actually, how do we, how do I go up the menu here? There we go. I'm like trying to work this out. There we go. Final boss, the void. Right. Oh no, that's, that's not exactly what I was after. It's before that, if I remember rightly, there's a skybox for it that's kind of similar. Door to Darkness? Nope. Crumbling Island? Nope. Trying to figure out all these areas, because it's annoying, because I found it ages ago. I was like, oh, I found it, it's great, I'm going to keep that as reference. And then I've, I've lost it. I know it's one of the Kingdom Hearts levels. That's the worst bit. Meanwhile, everyone's just watching me mess around here. It's like, dude, seriously, just get on with work. It's like, no, I'm trying to find this thing. It's really important. Do they have the gummy ship sections in here? Because if they did, that might help. Let's try going back to the gummy ship bits in here and see whether it works. Where are we at here? Come on up. Oh, there we go. Asteroid sweep. No. Stardust sweep. No. Broken highway. I mean, that kind of looks cool. I know it's just scrolling textures of clouds and everything, but that looks kind of cool. Nope. Man, I need to go. Stay safe, Moody. We believe in you. Thank you very much. <gasps> there it is. That's what I was after. Which one was that? Phantom Storm. Okay. That was what I was after. Alvin, I found it just as you were leaving. I swear this was one of the ones that I had for reference. Yeah, because because of how it is. Because I could easily do like a boss fight in an area like this and just have the... the uh, the area be massive. Th this literally could be a nice representation of the barrier. And what does everybody think? I like this, just not the green part. Yeah, the thing is, it changes in terms of like the colors and everything, so I could easily just make it so it, sh it shifts color and just have it so it looks kind of like this. Because it does work pretty well. Just have it so that, like, when uh, when we fight Azriel, the place looks massive. Just avoid the weed shape of greens, is that me? Oh, because of that. Yeah, I figure, like, we have some sort of platform or something that it looks like we're on, maybe. And then, oh, the, the floors underneath, and then have it look really gigantic and just have this sort of setup. It would be crazy. See what else there is, just in case I'm forgetting anything. That one looks kind of cool, but weird. Joel says, I'm here, really. Hello. I'm just checking out stuff real quick. No, that's not good. Yeah, so that that might be a good representation of the barrier to, to look at. Will there be similar fights in the movie, like Froggit and others? I think it would be weird to represent his attacks. A lot of people try not to. So what I'm going to try doing... Well, I'm, I'm out working on stuff here now. Let's just get rid of that. What I'm going to try doing is having as many of the encounters as possible. But, obviously, within reason. So, like, for instance, how you've mentioned about Froggit. A lot of the stuff is um, pretty awkward to do for obvious reasons. Representing them in 3D just seems really weird. Um, especially for, like, throwing, um, what is essentially a bunch of, like, flies at people and stuff. So what I was planning on doing was having it 
so that uh, a lot of the attacks would be logical, and then other ones would have to be changed. So, like, for instance, with Frogger, it might not be a case of doing the full attack, but maybe on other characters that it actually works with, uh, say, like, Whimsalot, because Whimsalot has a spear and has the, uh, the moth-style enemies that float around it, that would work. So it's a case of looking at, um, you know, like what characters have moves that can properly be used as attacks and then trying to figure that out. Um, it's it's going to be interesting. I'm going to have to look in other places, I feel like, to, to try and get a lot of the other different fights in. You know, to, for inspiration in terms of like what I could do to solve that issue. But um, I definitely want to try and keep as many of the um, the encounters in as possible, including boss fights. But other ones, like for instance, I've mentioned it before, but with like say Napster Bluke, Napster Bluke, we wouldn't really be able to do properly the same because of the way that Napster Bluke works with the tears. Um, so instead, a lot of these encounters then turn into interesting yet very innocent ways for Frisk to resolve things. Uh, so a lot of these end up being like either jokes or innocent sort of chats with characters rather than um, turning around and be like, oh, we're definitely including these these moves because it's just really weird sometimes. Like I'm trying to think of uh, Frog It stuff now. But the only thing I can think of at the moment is literally just having it so like frog it would essentially just like burp out flies and then the flies come and attack you that's another way of, of looking at it i think it's just a case of trying to be really creative but still kind of obviously harken back to the original stuff just trying to get that just right there if i subdivision that and that's where i feel like i'll be asking people uh advice on as well as just like how I should go about potentially doing ideas like that. Ooh. There we go, there's the back of the sofa. Snowden, Snowden's been done. I, uh, I just need to properly show it off in one of the next updates. He could trill or stomp stirring up the flies maybe potentially like i feel like i'm gonna end up looking a lot and this is gonna sound weird i feel like i'm gonna be looking a lot at say pokemon or something for ideas for certain moves or things that make sense you know and the reason why i say that is because like pokemon has a lot of moves that obviously the monsters have that are unique to them and would kind of work in the same vein you know it's like, obviously, with Undyne, I'm going to have to look at uh, lots of, like, spear fights and stuff and see what I can do for that. And also, other references, because, like, I want a really cool reference in there that I even did in the, um, in the original trailer that I don't know whether people actually <laughs> noticed what it was. Uh, let's see. Just let me... Actually, no, I, I need that to be that way. Like, I'll show you what Undyne's reference was now, because I, uh, I really enjoyed it. And I, I think I might keep it in there. I'm just going to look for, like, different things all over the place just to make sure everything makes sense and that fans agree with them. You know, let's see. Uh, I'm going to pull this up on stream now. Hang on. And, uh, okay, just need to pull up the, the exact stuff here to, to make sure, and I've, and I've also got to turn uh, the sound down as well.
Okay, right. That's one. And then... What was the second one, just to show it off? Okay, that'll work. I feel like Undyne will be relatively easy to fight, considering all the fan work we have. True, right? So here's what I had for uh, Undyne. This is a mix, right? And it's an anime reference specifically. So I think, I think it might go a bit crazy, but... So, some people might already realize, uh, recognize this anime, but some people might not. I just need to switch over to the right window here. That moment where I'm trying to switch over to it and it's not letting me. Give me a sec. I may have to... Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So... I watch a ton of anime, and uh, this particularly is uh, a really good one. This is Fate. Specifically, this one's Fate Zero. Uh, there are a couple of characters in Fate that use lances that are kind of like spears. So obviously, a lot of stuff like this, like slashing motions for close range, when you're not just shooting stuff, I felt like would have been really cool to use. But also, uh, in the original trailer, you can see this. I, I took massive inspiration from uh, this fight, which is just shooting spears magically out of thinner uh, uh, characters. Which I thought was actually pretty cool and a nice little reference. But again, that's if you know what I'm referencing. Uh, if not, it just looks crazy. But the idea is that then I can have that kind of effect where everything vanishes and then comes back. But yeah, it, it's just because I, I can get this or get hold of this footage really easy. Uh, it was easy for me just to reference that. Because that, that just makes sense, though, just having all the spears coming flying out of, like, magical portals or whatever. Or just having them magically appear. And then there was another one I did have. Um, it was... Give me a sec while I find it. was... Um... Hang on. I'm just trying to find it now. Here was another one. Uh... Hey, chicken. Nice to see you. So another way of potentially doing uh, Undyne's uh, ability was this as well. This is from uh, uh, Seraph of the End, right? And having Undyne spears appear behind her like that, I thought would be pretty cool. Because then they can all be used... I love the way it's buffering now. Uh, all of those could cause that then be used as projectiles. Like, scene... Here. There they go, shooting off. But I figure stuff like that is, is pretty easy and kind of cool to, to do with some reference. That would look very nice. Having them fan out behind her. I, I actually was leaning more into it recently, being like, yeah, I like that idea. I really do like that idea, you know. And stuff like that where anime and other things like that are going to be an interesting thing to reference to get things just right. What's even funnier is the fact that when you think about it, we've got anime reference uh, for fight scenes of a character that's asking whether anime is real or not. <laughs> you know, it's uh, It's ironic. Let's try and... But yeah, I figured I'd show off those little bits of reference there. Because I figured it, it's at least a good way of showing off kind of what I'm thinking about. And that way, people can say yes or no to my ideas, you know. So if somebody turns around and goes, Dude, I'm, I'm not so sure about that that one thing you showed. Is it going to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> And then it's a case of like, well, you know, if you if you don't like that, then what do you think I should do? You know, not in a, a nasty way, of course. More just a, if anybody has any better ideas, please tell me. You know, because I uh, I'm all ears and I'm open to that kind of thing to uh, to make this entire process a lot easier, so I can 
use the right reference. It's like with, um, with Toriel. With Toriel, I used, um, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. For reference, that's another anime. Let's do that as the, the amount of subdivisions I should have in a seat here. I love the way I just turned it into like some weird thing there when I, all I have to do is just add a couple more edges here and we're good. But yeah, again, if anybody ever wants to either spin ideas my way, I'll be like, dude, I'm not so sure about this one. Maybe you can do something else. Just by all means, tell me. More than happy to. More than happy to look at other things and consider other people's ideas and be like, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oop, let's loop these in here and then try and actually no I should do one at a time just in case I make a mistake loop and this should help me do this easier let's have a look maybe I need one there About there. Hey, that doesn't look too bad. And then I just need to do the next one. For some of the lesser recognized characters, like Smoking Dog, Garbros, do you have any specific voices? Um, not at the moment. I, uh, the Guard Bros, unfortunately, are being taken out and replaced by another character. Uh, the reason why is because I just can't get somebody to model them. And uh, by the time I decided on what I wanted to do, it was a case of I either commission somebody with the last of my money to do the guard bros as models, or I do a more recognizable character that I'd already commissioned. So I actually, for, for areas like that, there are different characters going to be in those places, which will fill the same roles, but fans will find it a little bit more interesting. And I know that sounds terrible because I really do like the guard bros, but it's like, I'm, I'm tr the, the problem is I don't have all of the models. I don't have every single character modeled. And while I'd like to have them, I'm, I'm literally paying somebody to model as much as I can now, and then once I run out of money, that's it. You know, so it's like, I'm trying to do this in a way that I think people will enjoy, while also trying not to edit things too much, in terms of the way that they work in the story. You know, so all I'll say is, there are a couple of new characters in here that, that you've already seen, in various different places, but, um, You'll you'll be surprised by how they've been reused. You know, I just I seriously get upset whenever I think about the fact that I really don't have all of the characters, and I wish I did. You know, it's uh, it's awkward because like I know a lot of the fans have different favorites. And I'd love to try and get as many of them in as possible. It's what I've been trying to do. It's just, it's so hard when there's like a cast of over 70 characters. And I think I've got about maybe 30 or 40. So I'm still missing like 30 characters, I think. I'm going to have to actually go back in and have a look. Let's try that. Okay, I think that'll work now for the the sofa. If I do that instead, and then go... 
Thing is, I don't want to make people unhappy with this. I really don't. Like, it was not my intention when I, I started doing this to be like, oh, I'm deliberately going to leave certain characters out. Instead, I was like, you know what, I'll try and get as much of this done as possible. And I'll get as many characters in as I can. <coughs> but it's just... It's just not the case. I can't do everything, and it's it's annoying me. Like, I'm trying to do as much as I can. I just can't. Let's do that for that bit, and then I can just copy that across. And then once we've copied it across, we'll be good. The idea here is that by copying that and then attaching, I can weld down the center. And then we should have a sofa that's the correct size. Absolutely love the Undertale yellow OST. But yeah, I'm still going to need voices for certain characters. I'm in the process of trying to get some. Uh, I'm slowly doing... Uh, voices, or rather, I'm not doing the voices, I'm doing the, um, the new auditions for characters. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who gets the roles. And then we can get all of that done and out of the way and then hopefully everything will be good. I smooth that now. Hey, there we go. And then we can just... I know, right? I can finally listen to the yellow OST because I played most of it. Thing is, like, I have not played the genocide run. And I've not played the, the neutral ending. But I've seen them. So I don't... I don't consider the the music spoilers for that kind of thing, but um, I'm treating Yellow like I treated normal Undertale, which is I, I'm deliberately not going to do another run on it. My true pacifist run is is final because I just don't want to upset the characters. You know, it, it, I, I just really don't want to upset them. You know, even though they didn't get a happy ending and they're already kind of upset, it's like I, I, I don't want to put them through that again. It's, uh, it's not nice. If you've seen it, it's not a spoiler. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, I was curious about the, the endings, the other endings. So of course I went and looked. But again, it's that whole thing of it's like it's not fair to to the characters at the end of the true pacifist route to then turn around and be like, oh, I'll do another, I'll do another run, or I'll just do a uh, a neutral or a genocide. Instead, it's just like no, 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 I'll just I'll stick with um, with the true pacifist ending, just like I did on the tail. There we go, we got the sofa set up. So now we can figure out the rest of the scale of this room and import everything else. This is definitely going to be bigger than um, what it looks here. I'm going to have to scale this up. That reminds me, Doge. Oh, here we go. Doge says... Not gonna lie, I felt so bad about inst instantly resetting because I was emotional over the pacifist ending and then immediately went to do a genocide run. The The thing is, like, I've mentioned that I did want to do another run at some point, but the problem is I, I don't want to take that away from them either. It's like, I feel conflicted because when I did Soroba at the end of a true pacifist route, 
I was so infuriated by getting filtered by her for that long that I wasn't focused so much on her story. I was just absolutely furious. And then it, it really took that part of the story away from me as a result. Like, I should have been... That's, that's an area that I should have been heavily invested emotionally in. And just because of how hard I found it, I, I wasn't. You know, so I kind of feel robbed in that sense. It's... It's awkward, it's like, I, I want to do another run, see if I'm better at it, but at the same time, it's like, I don't want to take that away from them. You know, so it's, it's rough, it's like, I might as well just not do another run, and just deal with that, that sort of problem that I've got at the moment, where it's like, dude, this just feels like I've had this stolen from me by the actual game. Yeah. Uh. It's just a shame that I have to feel like that because of the way the game is seemingly done. Shred that. But yeah, Doge, while you're here... Uh, I don't know whether you mentioned about it before. But, um... I mentioned before about the barrier and the final three fights, because I, men I mentioned there's a Reddit post um, that describes the final three fights of uh, Asgore in front of the barrier, in the neutral, and then Omega Flowey and uh, Final Form Asriel all being in the same area, that being obviously the barrier. I was wondering what your take was in terms of like making the barrier in 3D, you know, because I feel like, again, I mentioned before, the um, the bit where Flowey's Omega Flowey, where he's all, you know, massive and has tentacles growing out of him and stuff, that's going to be the easiest because it's just a dark area, it's void, it has nothing in it. But um, I'm trying to figure out the, the other areas. Again, I'm still kind of like on the fence. I might just make them like a giant cave. You know, because then that way I can put different um different bits of scenery and or whatever one of the really crazy ideas i had um for asriel originally was because essentially he can um manipulate almost everything in the underground now because he's basically uh, a god was uh, i had this crazy idea of having frisk's uh, fight set up in the final area where asriel is floating around little almost like islands made out of all of the different areas, like Waterfall and the ruins and stuff. And the idea was that you would be jumping from, uh, like, floating island to floating island in the middle of this rainbow trippy void while trying to deal with all of the, um, you know, the uh, different characters that you have to fight, you know, all the main cast. The idea being that you'd have to avoid Asriel, jump to the next one, deal with the other characters while avoiding Asriel and the character. Um, the Lost Souls, yeah. And then the the ending of it was that you would essentially have to take like this massive leap of faith off the final one. Like I described it to somebody originally. Omega Flowey is a giant void in Flowey's timeline, but for the actual barrier, no clue. Yeah, so imagine like the final fight with Asriel. Instead of being in an actual physical location, it's all these floating islands that have bits of each level on them. So like the ruins, waterfalls, stuff like that. And the idea is that the lost souls are on each one of them. And Frisk starts on like one of them that just has like the Delta Rune on it and is fighting Asriel. And then what happens is they get to the part where it's the lost souls and they see them over the edge of this platform that they've been fighting on this entire time and has to sort of get from one to the next while avoiding all of Azrael's shots. And the idea is that it's it makes it some sort of like cool interactive arena that just makes it a little bit more interesting than just being a giant corridor with lots of trippy lights in. Um, mainly because it's magic, right? So you can do you can do anything you want with magic, more or less. The idea being that Azriel is in this final form and is like, look, I'm God, I can do whatever I want. I'm controlling everything here, so this is what it is. Uh, 
And the idea being that once you've beaten all of the lost souls, they then just end up on the platform just cheering on Frisk. And the idea for the last bit that I had was when you have to save Azrael, is that you are avoiding all of these shots on the last platform, and the platform is slowly getting chipped away by all the shots that are flying past you. And there's like some floating debris of like the rock from like different areas in the last little bit. And the idea that I had was that Frisk has to take a leap of faith off the end by like jumping one to the other on these little tiny floating, floating platforms as the rest is just getting chipped away. So there's nowhere else for them to go. And the idea being the final one they jump off just as Azrael destroys it. And essentially, it's like this massive leap of faith just trying to grab him at the very end, just being like, have um, Frisk just shouting like, Azrael! And then just like gr grabbing for him in midair. Uh, and then as, obviously, Frisk is falling towards Azrael, um, I'll obviously have the shots going flying past the face or whatever, so make it look really dramatic. And then have them just catch them at the end. You know, I, I, I really want that as a final fight, if possible, because I, I just liked the idea of it when I came up with it, because I was just like, dude, these, this kind of island idea is really cool. I like the idea of bringing elements back that are recognizable for, like, each character. You know, and instead of just kind of being simplistic. It makes much more interesting to animate instead of an open void with a bunch of colors. Yeah, that's the thing. I've seen a lot of play uh, like animations that just do the open void route. And I, I didn't want to do that because it seemed a little bit restrictive to me in terms of what I can do. You know, whereas instead of having like a large open void that's made out of magic with like floating platforms and stuff, that at least allows me to make the, the fight a little bit more interesting. Like... Having Frisk holding on for absolutely dear life on the edge of certain bits and having bits be chipped away, you know, so the stakes feel a lot more higher, that came across as way more interesting for me. You know. I, I just started imagining this and now I'm crying, says Sammy. I'm so obsessed with that concept, says Doge. It's like, I, I thought I'd mention it, even though technically you could say it's spoilers until I actually implement it. But, um... I, I originally described it, and um, I uh, when I described it to somebody, I was like, yeah, we've got the, the memory thing going on at the same time that can happen when Frisk hugs Asriel at the, um, the very end. Um, oh, I just realized there's a spoiler in there for the, the last bit, you know, with the giant beam. Uh, I just realized because I missed that out of the description. There's a, there's another spoiler in there that I'm not going to mention because that spoils uh, a major plot point. But the, the memory bit that everybody else does, let's just say I want that to be very, very intertwined with, with all of it. And uh, that will that will be really nice to put in. I, I really want that now. I should describe that to a bunch of people in like a separate video and just be like, guys, this is a poll. Who wants this as an idea, you know? Who wants me to animate this is the, the very end. Because the way, the way that it could be, like I said, is because Asriel would have to be at like a different height. We just have like Asriel flying around and doing his own thing while shooting stuff and being very sort of mocking with how he is. And then as Frisk gets closer and closer and closer each time, jumping across all these platforms and little ruins and stuff, that's when we can have Asriel kind of like try and fly out of reach and then have the uh, the final bit with the, the spoiler bit that I'm glad I didn't mention. <laughs> you know, I, I'm glad I didn't mention it, otherwise that really would ruin everything. Oh, come on. But I like... Because there are so many other creatives in the uh, the community, I like passing ideas backwards and forwards between people like this because it's always interesting to get people's takes. No, so if somebody says like no, especially when I'm chatting to people, they can give me a good reason on the spot right then and there as to why they think no. 
and then I can easily just respond. You know, it's it's the best way of doing things, I figure. It's just, it's really nice to be able to talk to people in such a fashion where you get immediate feedback and then can be like, right, this is, this is, this is set in stone now. This is what I'm doing. You know. Here we go. We're going to append everything else into the, uh, the file here. Generic household items. Bam. There we go. We got everything else now. Now I just need to make everything the right size. Because look at this. Look at the scale of everything else. It's nuts. Everything's going to need to be scaled down, especially the... Um, the bookshelves here, because bookshelves are roughly about the same height as a door frame. Roughly. I had to turn around and have a look at my own there. But yeah, there's some there's some crazy ideas that I got for for certain bits and interesting ways of doing things. That might be a little bit anime-esque, but it's it's gonna be funny trying to uh trying to see whether all this stuff is is good, especially considering um how fans may or may not take to certain ideas. No. Honestly, it's like the one thing that I'm hoping is after all this work that everybody likes it, you know. That would that would be terrible if I do all this work and then nobody likes it. I'd just be like <laughs> You have to cry myself to sleep. It's like, what's wrong with Dave? He just spent like a year or two doing all this work and uh, and people don't like it. <laughs> I mean, anime and Undertale just go kind of hand in hand. That's why I was joking before. I said it's kind of funny how I've got anime reference for, like, a lot of the fights. And then we've got Undyne, who basically is, uh, is being convinced that anime is a real thing. Oh. Uh, I just realized I need those other, other bits there. The thing is, I'm going to practice a lot with the fights. Because I figured the generic sort of, like, things such as like walking and and doing little things like that they're a lot easier to do than fights i imagine so i've already got plans in place now for like actually animating fights a little bit better than what i've been doing previously essentially the idea is to try and treat it a little bit more like um the creator of ruby did monty ohm and uh, essentially create little uh move sets for each character and then just have it play out more or less like a beat em up game. So it sounds crazy, but um, but yeah, it's gonna be amusing. It's gonna be amusing to uh, joke about that as well. Like when I eventually get the um, the animations done. Hey, revenge. Okay, so we got tiny table here. Maybe I can use that instead of that one. That would work better. That one would work. Uh, that moment where I need to find the table and then place that in the right place. Where is it? Where is this? Oh, there it is. Table leg, tabletop. Ba -da -ba. Does this even. Like, does that. It kind of goes up to where we need it to. Let's try and. Shrink it a little bit. I might need to... Because this is a dining table. I might need to trim this down a little bit. Because it looks roughly about the right size. I just need to edit a little bit. Like, for instance, doing it... About there. And then... Let's move it in just a tiny bit. That, that roughly goes there, right? <laughs> I love the way Frisk's head is just sticking out the top of that at the moment. I, I, I may need to stop decapitating Frisk with a table. Let's just... Because of how that is, let's just make it... 
like the. That matches the top of the sofa then. So it makes it more like a, a small side table. <coughs> this this is definitely going to be a little bit larger. Toriel secret weapon is a table. That reminds me, have you seen the um, Call Me Mummy video? And that sounds really, it sounds really sus, but it's, it's a music video and it's, it's hilarious just watching Toriel in it. If you haven't, I, uh, I, I can post it in your Discord. Oh, you have? Yeah, I, I can't stop watching it. It's so good. I just watched, I love watching Toriel be completely unhinged. Oh, just some of the bits. This is so funny. This track, man. The, the Steamworks fight music is just so good. I know a lot of the music is good in yellow, but there's just some that stand out as like absolute bangers. I've rewatched it so many times. Indeed. That reminds me, when did we say... I only had to sing Last Straw for an hour. This is revenge. The Steamworks songs go so hard. I just... They're so good. Like, I'm glad I keep playing Yellow's OST on stream because I, I don't want to ruin the emotional impact that the original, you know, like, OST has for me. And that's not to say that, oh, yeah, I'm happy with the, you know, breaking the emotional impact that Yellow has. Because Yellow's OST is just as good, I think. It's just the whole thing of, like, Yellow's... While Yellow's is good, it's going to sound terrible, but Yellow's doesn't have as much of a special place in my heart as the original game. You know, I feel like... I feel like if you really got into the original game and you were that emotionally connected with it then you kind of you know you kind of get where i'm coming from where it's like the original one when it hits you hard emotionally you you can't forget that whereas i think it's mainly because yellow is a fan game it's like it's not as hard hitting in certain areas The original one was to be the main one. Yeah, it's like, I hate to say that as well, because I really do like yellow. I really do. But it's just the whole thing of it. it I think it might be because of the filtering as well, because of me being filtered. It just, it doesn't have the same emotional tie for me that, that the original one does. You know, the original one just grabs you by the heart and twists you a lot. In, in different ways, you know, and yellow, while yellow did that in certain instances, it just didn't do it as much for me, no. Oh, hey, Toby. It's hard for me to describe without sounding nasty. You know, because I, I really do like Yellow. Yellow does a lot of things right. You know, but like... It, it doesn't pull on the heartstrings as much. Definitely, yeah, still a good OST. The, it's the worst part for me when I'm... I speak English. But I've never been amazing at communication. You know, which, which sounds terrible. So, like, when I'm thinking about what I want to say and how I want to... how I want to say it, sometimes I can struggle quite a lot. You know, it's it's awkward. Same day. <laughs> it's, uh... It's not something that I like struggling with, let's put it that way, you know. It's like, the worst part is, it's like I used to go to, uh, when I was a kid, I used to go to speech therapy loads, you know, to be able to uh, speak properly. And uh, 
kind of reminds me a little bit of that, where it's like, dude, I'm having trouble speaking as an adult. Hey, what? You know. Yet again, more lore from Dave. Trying to put all this in the kitchen in such a way that it, it kind of works and isn't too big, but isn't too small. Let's try. There's the sink. The sink I can put next to the fridge. I can't wait to do the um, the dog shrine. Honestly, that's going to be so much fun. Because I can like try and copy the Japanese style for it. So, for anyone who wants to know what's going on with the, the dog shrine... The way that the dog shrine is going to take place for Immersion Tale is it's going to already be broken like this. The idea is that I'm going to have Mew Mew come in at the end of the uh, the neutral run and be the first thing that Frisk meets as kind of like a fast travel way of getting back to uh, Snowden instead of having to travel all the way back from Asgore. So what's going to happen is literally Frisk's just going to spawn in and get essentially flung straight into the dog shrine which is going to break and then obviously we've got Mew Mew behind it so Mew Mew is going to be the first boss fight immediately after um Asgore Goro Mega Flowey I think if I remember rightly isn't Mew Mew in the Switch version after you've completed all of it Mad Mew Mew. Because I've not, I've not played the Switch version all the way through. I, uh, I let Stu do that, so let's see. Behind yeah, the uh, quest dog, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Just having a look now. Oh, that's the, that's the wiki for something else. Hang on. Uh, she appears behind the poker table, blah, 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 blah. You can only interact with Mew after defeating Metaton. Yes, yeah, so that makes sense. Um, what? Yeah. yeah, then you can see her in the end uh, in front of Nine's house in a true pacifist. So yeah, that does make sense. Uh... <clears throat> Dojmeme 101 says, hey, I'm back. I have an idea for Smoking Dog's voice. I honestly do not have um, that model. Or not a good one for... Uh, I think that one's Doggy. I, I don't have a model for that one, unfortunately. Not a good one. So it's like, I'm, I'm for that one in particular, I've literally got... Um, I've literally got a, uh, a sign on his, or on the uh, station that just says, be, our, uh, be right back, getting more dog treats. You know, that's, that's just one way that I have to get around that problem, you know, of not having models creatively while also suggesting that, yeah, they're still here, you just can't see them. You <laughs> know. Can only see moving things, lol. ADHD in a nutshell. Sometimes, to Sammy. <laughs> but yeah, there are, there are weird and creative things that I have to do to try and get round the whole deal of not being able to show certain characters because of not having access to the models, unfortunately. Again, it's that whole thing of just trying to now get the, the final models so that people can see as many as possible. Some of which you can already see online if you know where to look, but because the character artists that I've hired actually uh, uploaded them to the social media recently. <laughs> I was like, yeah, why not? It's all good.
I had just hyper focus since before the stream. I've just finished my masterpiece. Mikey from TMNT. Oh, nice. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep Toriel's pots and pans here. We can put them on the wall as well. Funny enough, this is what I was saying when I, I mentioned certain things were inspired by Animal Crossing. These, these here in particular are literally uh, my copies of Animal Crossing stuff from scratch, based off the the same models by I. You know, so what I've done essentially is look at them and gone, okay, this is how it looks in Animal Crossing, let's see if I can copy it. Yeah. I'm going to include that one as well. Because that should be familiar to people that have played Animal Crossing. This is one of the tables as well. Just... Oh. Are you going to give Greater and Lesser Dog a voice? I figured I would just go with Parks. I figured I would actually go with just proper dog Parks. You know. Because of how they are. Because they don't really talk. Oh. I'm going to need to move those back a little bit. They speak in woofs or yips for greater dogs and semi. Let's do that there. I'm going to have to move the, uh, the sink and the uh, there we go. The sink and the refrigerator back. Where's the refrigerator in here? Uh, kitchen shelf, carpet, hallway, frying pan. Oh, oh come on, where is it? It should be in here. Um, stove. This is another one that goes hard from yellow. So good. Try that. Ugh. It's actually kind of amusing how we're slowly finding out the scale of this place, not by the sprite work, but by the actual assets. <laughs> you know, like I imagine the living room's gonna need to be a bit bigger because of how it looks here. It looks very tiny. So if I put like Toriel in the center there, because we know the um, the stairs are over to the side, and they go up. I put Toriel there. That's going to be really tiny to get through there. I imagine we're going to need to do something like this, where we take the table and everything else near it. Oh, and we just move it slightly. That way, we we get a bit more room for the TV and everything else. I was expecting this kind of trouble anyway, so. Absolutely love this theme, even though it got filtered by Axis hard as well. And then I need this over here. We'll just move that back a little bit more. The whole point is so that Toriel has enough room to walk around, and so does the, like, so does everybody else past the TV. About that, roughly. And then I can just move this into the center so it still makes sense. I put that back there now, that 
kind of appears in the center. It's a little bit better. <coughs> I can get myself another drink here. Let's just, uh, boink. Let's make sure I, uh, I vanish for a moment while I get myself another drink. Ooh. I know we've not got too much done at the moment, but I mean, at least the uh, the planning for the interior here is going all right, because you know, otherwise I'd be a bit upset, because at least now um, we're slowly getting the downstairs done. Once the downstairs is done, and then I can block out the um, the actual location, you know, in terms of like the walls and where everything else should be, then I can do the upstairs the same way and the upstairs should hopefully fit nicely then we can put the um the entire thing into snowden and it will be nice i just need to make sure that when i do the illusions for the exterior i make sure that i uh, i do them well enough that it looks like the exterior matches with the interior because the interiors are all going to be i think using fake exteriors to make it look as though there's stuff outside unless it's the library which actually has to have stuff outside <laughs> I just need to add that in from the uh, the version of Snowden in the random. Let's see what we're up to soundtrack wise. I just realized this is going to be right next to. Um... Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm going to have to skip the. <coughs> Excuse me. A bit of the. the... Um, soundtrack there primarily because um, Medium is the one that always gets <coughs> copyrighted. So if we skip to UG Apartments there. There we go. Bless you, Sir Sammy. Thank you very much. Oh, so anyone that's here still in chat while well, I'm making a drink, here's a question for you, right? Or rather, here's a seat situation that I've got that I figure I can put past you and see what you guys think at the moment I'm still trying to contact people for different ideas story-wise that I can include you know like fan comic stuff where I'm like okay I've read this fan comic looks interesting ideas pretty cool maybe I could use this it would be pretty nice and sort of add on for for fans in a nice way that wouldn't sort of get rid of the uh, the original story uh, but it would add to it and wrap up certain bits pretty nicely. Uh, what I was thinking of doing was because at the moment I have had no response from creators in terms of, uh, you know, permission as to whether I can do uh, certain things. You know, like, for instance, me turning around and being like, oh, I like your idea. Do you mind if, you know, I animate it or whatever for part of my fan thing and just give you like the the credit for it and everything i have not heard any response to uh any messages that i've sent out like that so my idea now is literally to tease it and what i mean by teaser is because i have models for certain things obviously and i have all of the underground and i still need to get practicing animating again anyway my idea is literally to do small segments animated fully of uh, those bits with voice and then literally just show them to the creator by tagging them and just be like, look, can I do the rest of this? So, <laughs> And this is what I'm going to be using it for. I'm going to credit you and everything. It's not exactly as if I just want to steal stuff, but I figured that way it'll get people's attention rather than um, just kind of waiting for like a year or so for <laughs> responses or whatever, because I, I can't wait that long, obviously. I just want to get stuff done, but it's just some nice little things that I can add. You know, I figure if I have to do that to get attention, then it'll be interesting. So what does everybody else think? Should I, uh, should I do that? Or do you reckon it's a bit sort of uh, aggressive of me to just animate things and then be like, excuse me, I can do the rest of this. <laughs> I can do the rest of this. This is what I'm using it for. I'm crediting you, so it's not exactly as if I'm stealing. How do you feel about this? I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Get myself a drink in the, in the uh, meantime.
See what chat says while I'm making this drink now. Somebody says, as an artist, I do get flattered when somebody uses my art for something, but when it's out of the blue, I get nervous. That's that's fair, you know. I just figure like the best way to describe it is it's not as if I'm doing the full ideas I would like to, but at this point, it, it's kind of like asking for permission. And I do want the permission, but it's like I'm unable to get it in the time frame that I want so that I can just go ahead and be like, right, this is this is definitely going in. I can plan things out from here. Instead, it's just like, oh, I'm going to have to wait. And now the person's not responding. Uh, this is like the only way that I can, I can figure it out is by trying to kind of push things along a little bit. And then if it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't go anywhere. Just ends up being a tiny teaser for fans, and that's it, based off somebody else's work. So. It depends on the type of artist. It's like, from my perspective, again, it's like when I, when I set out to do anything with this project, I do things with the intent not to steal or flat out steal but to credit everybody for their ideas for the help for everything you know because at this point a lot of the community is is helping in various different ways whether it be ideas with voice acting you know or with other random people you know giving me models for characters and things so it's like it's not as though i just want to take things and take things and not give credit you know so i'm not doing anything with the intention i'm being nasty you know, it's just like, I just like that sort of clarification, I suppose, as to whether I can do this or not. Again, it's just trying to plan stuff and not getting any responses, a little bit awkward. Leaves me the situation where I'm like, should I still do this? Should I not do this? It's a good idea and it's kind of cool. I passed it between a couple of people and they seem to suggest that it's it's really cool if I added it in but if I did add it in and then I still credited people but I didn't ask well then is that okay because technically that's not okay you've just kind of used it and then gone here you go that's yours you know so it's it's rough it's like with the yellow team I, I'm trying to contact the Undertale yellow team just so I can like use some of the background assets like the Mew Mew, Mew, Mew Love Blaster machine uh, so I can put that in, like, the lab for a, a laugh, just so that people know that Alphys has one. You know, just as, like, a little nod to be like, oh, yeah, it's, it's yellow, yellow exists, you know. And uh, and instead, they've just not responded. I'm like, uh, can I get a Discord of somebody? You know, what what can I do here? What can I do to, to get people on Discord or whatever else, you know, email, Twitter or whatever, so I can just talk to them and be like, excuse me, this is what I want to do, yes or no. You know. If you know it's a smaller artist, maybe leave a link to the original work's origin. Because it does kind of help smaller artists. Oh, that's what I mean. Like, the idea is by putting all of the, the links and, like, telling people exactly where artists came from and stuff like that helps people find them. Uh, I'm just going back in with my drink now. The, um, it's like at the moment, the way that I have the credits set up, I don't actually want to show you the credits anymore because, you know, I, I showed you like the eight pages of the mages ago, which ended up growing into 11 and then I think 14 now. Um, the reason why I don't want to show you them now is because there are a few spoilers in there that people might see and be like, oh my God, that's what you're doing? You know, but, um, but basically, um, it's one of those things where with the credits, I showed off um, originally uh, people, and I've I've put in brackets like where they're from, or where the characters and models are from, the artwork. So if I've got it from like Deviant Art, it says in brackets like Deviant Art. If I've got a model from Sketchfab, it says Sketchfab. 
it's the exact usernames and everything else, you know. Um, it's just so people can find them. It's just, I don't know, it's going to be awkward. Maybe I should just, like, try and reach out via animation and see what happens. Oh, there we go. Boom, I'm back. Again, it's, it's not like I'm turning around and, and be like, oh yeah, I definitely want to steal people's work. Because that's, that's not my intention. Definitely not my intention. It's just at the moment, it's rough trying to get an answer back from anybody. Because it seems like they just kind of stay in their own little bubble and, and don't respond. <laughs> Oh, let's do that and do this, which can then go there, and that makes sense space-wise. As long as the art is fully credited, you should be fine, unless they try and reach out with you and ask you to remove it. Yeah, that's what I was originally thinking, but like, somebody asked me to um, remove one of the posters recently from the MTT Resort, and that was mainly just because I'd used artwork that I'd credited people for that was from um, some like Tumblr account and some other stuff and I like I said I, I credited it properly um, within the credits and stuff and even like for one of them I put the creator's username like by such and such on the actual texture that was in full plain view but uh, yeah apparently that wasn't good enough so I'm not going to say what happened there exactly, but it was it was just kind of, it took me by surprise, is all I'm going to say. Where I was like, hmm, interesting. Especially because I'd seen another creative use the exact same uh, image as a texture, and I'm like, uh, what's the difference? You know. That should work there. All I need to do is get a plasma TV now. I'm just gonna try and find one on Sketchfab. Hang on. LCD TV. There's one there, there's one there. Give Sans and Papyrus like the best TV ever. TV with table. Oh, that might be happy. Yeah, let's see what chat says. What I'm going to have to do is start doing the uh, the textures soon, but I think what I'll have to do is leave that till tomorrow because it's getting pretty late. Ooh. See what TVs I can get here. Okay, there's that one. Triangles, verts. Oh, okay, so that's, that's a little bit more in depth. What about that one? That's just a standard one, even I could model that, but... What about this one? That one's not too bad. Okay, is that one? Yeah, that one's... That moment where you try and get a, a TV model and uh, it's super high detail for no reason. I think I'll go with that one. Here we go. Uh, this music man for Flowey's fight is so crazy.
It just this sounds absolutely insane when you uh, when you hear it in game, especially the uh, the playthrough that I watched of it. You could even hear him laughing in certain beds. Okay, that'll work. Is that? Yeah, that does fit. Okay, so I need, I need all of this to be moved slightly to the side here. Oop. The reason why is because when I look at the floor plan layout, all of that meets up with the, the edge of the chair. Uh, let's see. Most others that I know are pretty understanding when it comes to situations like this, and if the people you are using artwork from are present in the under, then there shouldn't be too many issues. Yeah. Like, I always like to ask for permission first because it's polite you know and I've conducted myself politely so far and it's it's worked for me so why not you know continue doing that okay I can do that text in now for the the floor there and that'll be good I'll just quickly whip that up Whip that up in Photoshop so it looks exactly the same. Okay, it's gonna be uh, that one. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, that was terrible of me. And that one. Right, if I do, one, zero, two, four. I do that for the carpet, and then we, we take this wave pattern. And I just try and apply that to it, we should be good. Just need to um, get this in Photoshop. There we go. Right, if I just... People aren't going to be able to see this for a moment, but hopefully it should be... All right. Can't wait to see best characters known in the pet rock. Oh God, yeah. I have to put the pet rock on the um, the table. See, the funny thing about all of these streams is, and and the reason why I uh, I like Undertale and its fandom is because like stuff like the pet rock. I'd actually slightly forgotten about because of me only doing basically two runs that are both true pacifist, one on console and then one on uh, PC. And there are little details like that that just skip, you know, it's like you forget about it for a moment when you've not obviously played it more than once. Or in my case, twice in a very long time. So it's funny to be reminded of them and then go, oh yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. 
Okay, so this needs to be there, roughly. If I do that and then go uh, duplicate layer, that's not too bad. And then I can just hopefully copy all of this, merge, duplicate. And if I Ah, there's an issue that. Damn it. The issue being that the edge of two of these colored bits were not meeting up. Or maybe they were and they were just wrong by the looks of it. Hang on. Hmm, might have to clip that. I'm like looking at this and going, hmm. Because I've got it in the right place and everything. It's just weird how it's not quite meeting the edge of where I want it to go. Nope, oh, wrong. W pet rock. <laughs> Let's do Yeah, it's the actual texture itself that I'm overlaying. It's uh it's wrong. The edge of it. What I need to do here is delete the the edge of it. That's a problem. And then see if it still seamlessly tiles. And if it doesn't, well then I got a problem. I got a slight problem. Um If I delete that, what I can do is hopefully try to work on this, and then you guys will get to see it because, like. Trying to get this to work correctly is uh, a bit crazy. The idea being here that I can then just like take a texture, put it over the, um, the floor color. and then edit it all together and it'll look okay. It tiles horizontal, now it tiles, tiles vertical, okay. I have a theory, in cone tail, pet rock stays the same as wearing a tiny cone. Oh my God, yes. That would be so funny. See, like the funny thing about cone tail is even though it's just a joke AU, 
it's still funny to come up with ideas for, you know, different uh, scenarios from it. Of what could have been. You know, so say, like, for instance, um, making characters look completely crazy. Like, for instance, imagine, like, in Toriel's house, she just has cones sat at the table. That would make her look like a complete and utter mad woman. You know, it's like, Toriel, you okay in here? She's like, yeah, I'm just looking after everyone. It's like, you, uh, you, you sure you're good, Toriel? You, um, you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm just looking after everybody. Meanwhile, Frisk's just looking at her like, I don't think I should be here. <laughs> Let's... Oh. Merge all that down. I'm just trying to, um... Get the carpet texture right now, you know, just so I can put it in and you guys can see it before I end up calling it for the evening. I reckon I need to make it slightly desaturated. Let's try that. This is literally using the one from in-game. All I've done is just slapped it over, um, over a carpet texture. Do sands and papyrus interior textures. And downstairs carpets. Right, so I'll show you this now. Bye, there we go. So I think I've got that relatively, relatively decent. As you can see, you can see all the, the different carpet uh, texture on it there. And then we've got the, the wavy pattern on it. That moment where I go so OCD as to actually count how many waves are in this and then put those in, you know, um, how many times they, they turn up. I may end up doing that, I don't know. Sometimes I can do that. I can I can literally just be so crazy when it comes to accuracy. I should put Jeff next to the pet rock for a laugh. You know, that would be amusing. Everyone's like, wait a minute, what's Jeff doing in Sands of Papyrus's house? I just have another one in Cone Tail. Monster Souls are just upside down white cones. We need Jeff. I, I figure I might sneak him in an MTT resort. You know, on uh, where Burger Pan says, just have like a, uh, a little cardboard cutout that um, memes did with Jeff. That would be so funny. Everyone would be like, what the heck's that behind Burger Pants? Or like next to the, uh, the tail. See if this works. Where is the modifier? Oh, it won't have a modifier because it's not a texture. I was gonna say I'll just like put a modifier on it and then just duplicate it to see how it looks, but. It doesn't actually look bad underneath Toriel's feet though. But the problem is it's just a reference image, so. That actually doesn't look bad. I might go with that because that doesn't look. Like the, the texture might be a little bit too big. The um, the actual carpet one. I might need to just tone it down just a tiny bit. or make it a little bit smaller. It's not actually too far off what I want though. I'm just trying to think because like actual carpets... I'm just looking at mine now, that I've got in my house. Oh, 
up it isn't too far off that. I just need to potentially do it by 50 again. I can't even remember whose this is. This is where I find out it's like Sorobas or something. Let's see, 227. Yeah, it is. It's Sorobas, because I actually like that bit of it. That moment where it was just ironic that where I'm like, oh, it's probably Sorobas, and the next minute, oh, yeah, it's Sorobas. So Rover is literally just that meme of like, I, I've gone too far, let's keep going. <laughs> let's see where this ends up. Okay, let's go merge. Oh, excuse me. You should just put a random frame where Jerry appears. <laughs> I, I don't even have the um, the model for Jerry, although I could probably ask Lotus. Like, I'm not saying I could. I could ask and see what happens, but... Did you finish yellow then? Yes, I did. I, uh, I finished yellow on stream. I see. Thank you very much. I, I finished true pacifist on stream a while back. And then didn't want to... Um, didn't want to do another run of it. Very similar to um, when I did Undertale originally, I didn't want to uh, do another run of it because of it being pacifist. So now I gotta watch it. Um, it was. Let me let me have a look for a moment. I'll show you because it's it's so frustrating. That's why I keep getting upset about um, Saroba's storyline because like in between playing the frustrating bits, the story for Saroba is like really heartbreaking for me. Especially as a parent now, it's just like, dude, this is so bad. You know, and then I'm getting taken out of the the emotion because basically the game's just filtering me hard. It was uh, it was not nice. There we go, Beyond Steamworks. Let me let me just check this out. I swear it was. I love the way I'm getting like adverts and stuff for UK cinema and stuff. Oh. Yeah, there we go. <coughs> oh, I kept getting filtered. There we go, let's, I'm going to put that on for a little bit, because I think there was, there was that one, and then there was, did I do it just in video form, because I was getting filtered that hard? Clover versus Saroba part 11? Did I do it part 12, or was it just part 11? Uh, do, do, do. Let's have a look. Where's the other? I'm trying to find the other bit now. I know it's in here. You just reminded me of something sad I heard. Where's my Metaton pillow? It's like... Don't get me wrong, I, I absolutely love... Storylines. You know, for like certain games. But I can get really into them more when I'm I'm not angry at them for kicking my ass for like a week or something stupid you know where's the ending like seriously i should have the the ending here give me a moment I'm trying to find the ending for undertale yellow here if i know like didn't upload it or something stupid Lethal Company, no, 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 working on Waterfall, there we go. 
part 12. Did I end up doing all of Soroba through No, I didn't. I, I was stuck on Soroba. Oh, here we go. This is embarrassing. I was stuck on Soroba. Four. If you include that, uh, there's... Over two hours. I think about two hours, 15 minutes. Like, where is it? Um, I'm not going to show the full two hours, 15 minutes now, but uh, let's see. I had to go back and get health, if I remember rightly, because I was trying to brute force it. A moment where I... I start up the um the video so i can like show it on stream and uh youtube showing me adverts again because i've not got the ad block set up properly ah uh, come on but yeah as a parent that's the one thing that annoyed me more than anything else as a parent now i was getting really into the saroba storyline and getting filtered really was not helping you know I'm there like, oh my god, this is so emotional, because mainly because I'm like, as a parent, this is, this is a really awkward situation for her to be in, and I kind of get it, and then at the same time, she's just like, so anyway, just gonna kick your ass, <laughs> you know, it's like, please, please, don't do that, please, I'm supposed to be getting all emotional, like, here she is, what's, what's the, there we go, right, so this is, um, Beyond the Steamworks, right? And this is just her filtering me like mad. I'll just, uh... ...is proactive. Monster kind is worth protecting. So I'll see that it is done. Remember how I suggested playing Toho? Wait, what? Truthfully, I have nothing left in life. So I've made peace with throwing it away. You'll fight back, but you can't forever. Goodbye. Oh god damn it. It's one of these, isn't it? I love the you you can tell I'm not happy with that where it's like it's the same with Asgore, and I, I hated this about Asgore and Undertale when you get to the very end of a neutral run, where you get the hints of him being all nice and and um happy and everything and being the the most nicest character in the underground more or less and then you get to him and he just refuses to listen to you at all it's just like dude are you kidding me and it's like Soroba you just want to sort of give her a hug and be like it's okay we can try and figure something out and instead she's just like nah I'm just gonna murder a kid it's fine it's just like well nobody listen to me here you know it's just like the most annoying thing ever Hated this with Asgore as well because I didn't really. Nobody listens ever. No turning back. Check. A legacy not to be forgotten. Okay. Wait, what? Okay. Oh, wait, what? I thought. Oh, jeez. Seriously? You're just starting out with an attack that homes in? Um, can I negotiate? I'm trying to talk with Saroba, but her attention is impenetrable. Okay, so she's just not having it. Oh, jeez. Oh. Are you... Dude. I can't move out of the way in time. What's so... So, yeah. There was, there was that one. Where I was getting frustrated there. And that was the start of the fight, and that goes on from like a minute 32 to a minute 47, I think, in a, uh, not a minute 47, an hour uh, 47, from, a min, uh, from an hour 31, 32, roughly. So we spent about maybe 10 minutes there on Saroba, and then in part 11, I go back with some uh, food items so I can heal, and she filters me 
for another 46 minutes and then I take a break in between because um, I don't want to lose position in the fight here. Thinking, oh, I'm at the end, you know, because we're, we're doing all right. We're making progress. Uh, where was it? Here. And the reason, the reason why I did this as a video and not a stream is because you know it's serious when I'm not, uh, you know, like when I'm not uh, talking or I'm not visible because I, I was just so focused on that bit. I was just like, I, I need to beat Saroba here. Let's, let's just work on this, you know. So I go ahead for 46 minutes there. And then... I end up streaming because I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty close to the end of, of beating Saroba. It's no problem. I'm watching all the, the emotional bits. And then she comes back and filters me for another hour and 35. You know, it's just... Hello everyone, welcome back to more yellow. I'm just at a really important point, so I just thought I would share the links around here and then away we go. Because, oh boy. Solomon and Christina are paying a visit and bringing food too. I'll help you up and we can all enjoy a picnic on the front porch. How's that sound? Saroba. Yes? I don't. <laughs> this is all so pitiful. Hey, don't say that. I love the little character interactions. They're so good in between. And then where was it? I think it's here where it comes back and I'm like, oh, God damn it. Where is it? Terrible. Hey, Damon. What? What was that? Were you in my head just now? You have no right! Oh my god, I thought I'd beaten her, now she's got a third form? Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, I thought... Are you kidding me? Uh, enjoy. Bring in mind, bring in mind, at this point, I'd worked the part 11 that I uploaded as a video here. I'd, I'd worked on th this for 40 minutes, right? And I'd, I'd been feeling it slowly throughout the music, throughout I was getting closer and closer and closer. Because I've said before, like on stream, I can be really, really influenced by music at some points. So you can see me, I'm like slowly, slowly improving and getting better and better and better over the course of part 11, right? And I'm thinking, okay, this is a hard fight, but at least I feel like I'm getting somewhere. This is good. I'm actually learning. It's not too hard here now. I'm, I'm getting places. This is good. I feel like it's going to come to a close. And then at the beginning of part 12, she does that. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? And then for the next like hour and 35, she just proceeds to literally just curb stomp me to death and back. And it gets to the point where I, I'm just complaining. I'm just complaining so hard because of how ridiculous it is to where everyone's like, dude, take a break, take a break. Just just come off it, say, go away from it, come back some at some other point. And I'm like, if I remember rightly, it was close to like midnight or one in the morning. And I'm I'm just like, I can't. I really can't. If I If I quit now, I have to do the entire thing all over again. I have to see this through in one go, you know, and then I was running out of items at the same time and everyone was like, just, just dodge and shoot. I'm trying to get used to the patterns at the same time and the patterns are really erratic. Um, and some of them seemingly unfair is the best way of putting it. Like for instance, if you, uh, don't move, she throws a bomb at you that makes you move but then immediately throws a bomb at you. The next one after will be one that you are not supposed to move at. So 
you, you'll essentially have to move real quick, then stop. Meanwhile, she's throwing projectiles at you all the time, so you are going to take the hit at one point, you know. Um, I'd actually love to see somebody do Saroba no hit. I might have to look at that. But, like, it was getting so hard for me trying to work stuff out. And then everyone, I think it was here, where was it? Where I was literally just like, I, I, I'm going with it. It's just determination at this point. I, I'm not backing down. Where was it? It was about there, roughly, I think. And it didn't help that the music was, was making me feel sad, but also determined at the same time, so I'm just like, no, 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 I'm sticking, I'm sticking this through, you know. Oh! No, no, no! Oh! <laughs> no! I was paralyzed there and open to getting hit, and the next minute, the game's like that. Oh, there we go. I can just... Bear in mind, this was using not auto-shooter. You know, where you can just hold down and keep firing. This was me literally smashing the controller loads to, to both dash and shoot at the same time. So I was, my hands were a complete mess after this. You know, I was like worried because I've suffered two major hand injuries in the past, which have left my hands and arms in a bit of a wreck. Um, they're a lot weaker than what they, what they used to be, let's put it that way. And everyone's just like, dude, just take a break, just take a break. And I'm like... I can't, I'm going to wreck my hands or I'm going to do this and then just have a massive break because otherwise I'm, I'm not going through this again, you know. Hey, I'm here. Ah, no, no, no. Okay, um... Nope, that's a black hole there and then one of those... Happy fountain things. Oh, okay, right. Endure. Nope. Ah, oh, that's gonna get me. Come on! <laughs> oh no! It was so close to ending that attack there. Try staying near the bottom. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll come off this now, but yeah, it was, um... It was rough. <laughs> That's the, the best way of boring it. Sammy says, I'm going to head out, Dave. Take care. It's all right. I'm, I'm probably going to come off anyway and, and work on the rest of this at some point. So, yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed. I know we've been getting a little bit distracted, but it's been fun. So, yeah. I, uh, I hope to see you on the next one. And until then, bye.